Hey, welcome to the Way of Truth through Torah. And today I'm a lucky gal. I've got two of my friends that are also teachers. So I've got Charles Bands and I've got Seth Green. And I'm Vicki Gibson. And why did that thing just pop up there? You know why. <laughs> I think we can just exit that. Yeah. Presumably. Sorry, so thank goodness I've got guys that are much more tech savvy than I am. So guys, listen, what is the Torah Porsche today? Ki Tissa. Ki Tissa. Which, what does that mean? When you lift up. Do you know, this is my favorite Torah Porsche <laughs> of all. It really is really? my favorite, favorite Torah Porsche. <laughs> for real, okay? So, but guys, listen, does so it even go with, um, does it even go with the first, I mean, so where does the name of the Torah Porsche come from? first words of it. The first words, and the first words, and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, when you take the census of the children of Israel. It doesn't go with it, does it? Well. So it's one of the few, in fact, I think it's the only Torah portion, but it's saying when you count mm -hmm. or raise up the head of each, mm -hmm. each individual. But what's interesting here is, are we supposed to count the people? Are people numbers? If I, if I was to stop it, count one two three four five what was your number three four guys are we like animals no no so this is going to be one of the really beautiful things about this tour portion is that yah doesn't allow us to be counted like animals he uses a completely <coughs> different method and you know what's interesting too in 1980 israel went back to the shekel economically as a, a source of payment in israel which i thought was really cool so it's a half shekel is what the, what the payment is. So a shekel is tiny, and then it's it's like um, what is it called? It's got little dots in it where you can break it. It's perforated. So it's perforated. Thank you. I knew that Charles would have that name. So let's get started. And so Charles is a teacher over in Mahaya now, and so he is doing a great job over there. And Seth is my targamite. He named himself the targamite. So Seth is going to be pulling from the Targum as we're going through the regular scriptures. The well, and I say regular, and we do use like, there you go. yeah, yeah, yeah. We do use the scriptures Bible. Thank you, Charles. Okay. And we give the the scriptures away. So if anyone out there wants the scriptures Bible, please let us know. We will be more than happy to send it to you free of charge, and um, no no cost for the Bible either. So. Um, as we're going through the scriptures, Charles will, I mean, not Charles, sorry, I got two of you. My mind doesn't hold but one name. Seth will be handling everything to do with the Targum. And the Targum basically is just the Aramaic scriptures of the, the Bible. Excuse me. Originally, the verses were in what? Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah. But the majority of the population spoke Aramaic. Aramaic. And so we are using the Jonathan, and we also have the Jerusalem. We're, this is this is by um, what is his name? Uh, I'm there somewhere. Maybe. Zen Garcia. Zen Garcia. This is Zen Garcia's targum, and it is the Palestinian targum as well as the Jerusalem targum. And the Palestinian, I'm going to tell you, is really more realistic because it doesn't have the influence of Babylon. Yeah. When they went to Babylon and came back, it did change things. In fact, what did they come back calling the months? The first month, instead of a bee, which stood for the barley harvest, they came back calling it. Any going? Nissan. Nissan. Nissan's a Babylonian name. In okay. the car. Huh? Yeah, G -G's. And what? In the car. In the car, yeah, that's what I said too. This, I jinxed you because we said it at the same time. And see, I'm still there. You got your hands full today. Nissan. Yeah. No. <laughs> the craziest month is actually the month of Tammuz. Right? Yeah, no, that one. Thing. So, so how did John name his months? The first, first month. month. Second month. The second month. The third month. And we are in what? The 11th or 12th what? month? 12th, 12th <laughs> month. Right, right yeah. now. And we'll be checking for the barley harvest. Oh, to see if the barley is getting ropped in Israel. You because the that teeth almost, right? I'm not sure. I think so. Could be. Middle of April will be Passover. Pesach hey, should be around the middle of April, and that again is going to depend on the sighting of the moon and the barley harvest. So, okay, let's get started. 
Okay. And, and like I said, we have got a lot to go over today, guys. My favorite, favorite, favorite part is what happens in the camp while Moshe is up in the mountains getting all the commandments. All of the commandments. And when he came down, that, that's my favorite part of this. But we also have the counting. We have the oils. Listen, Yah, the creator of all these oils, he, he created them for a purpose. And it's amazing to me because if you think about it, there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of skins, there's a lot of bodies around the temple, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Have you ever cleaned fish? Mm -hmm. What? Flies and yellow jackets. And you have to fight for your meat. You're like, <laughs> I need someone here with a clean water while I clean this fish. You're right, Jerome. So why would they not be in Israel, right? So, so the oils have such a, a great purpose, but there's, there's some mysteries behind the oil that we're going to find out about. Okay, are we ready? And the great story that we're going to find out is, and it's a question that we put on the, the lock, to our live stream, which is what really happened in the camp? And we're going to dig down deep in the Targum and find out the, the rest of that story. So let's get started. And Charles, you want to start out reading? Sure. Um, 3011? Uh, yes, please. <clears throat> and Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, When you take the census of the children of Israel to register them, then each one shall give an atonement for his life to Yahweh when you register them, so that there is no plague among them when you register them. Everyone among those who are registered is to give this, half a shekel according to the shekel of the set-apart plague, 20 garahs being a shekel. The half shekel is the contribution to Yahweh. Everyone passing over to be registered from 20 years old and above gives a contribution to Yahweh. The rich does not give more, and the poor does not give less than half a shekel when you give a contribution to Yahweh to make atonement for yourselves. And you shall take the silver for the atonement from the children of Israel and give it for the service of the tent of appointment, and it shall be to the children of Israel for remembrance before Yahweh to make atonement for yourselves. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, and you shall make a basin of brawn. Okay, hold on. Let's talk really quick. Thank you so much. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Guys, powerful. you know what we didn't do after we started? We did pray. Seth, would you pray for us? Yes. Abba Father, thank you for today. Thank you for gathering us all today uh, to share your word, Father, and uh, be one with you, Father. Thank you for looking down on us, Father, and just uh, being a sign between you and us, Father, so we, we could uh, call out to you come to you when uh, we have any uh, burdens whatsoever, Father. Thank mm -hmm. you for bringing Tiffany and Charles back. Yes, it's a great you. blessing to have them here. Thank you oh, for bringing yes. Samantha, Samantha uh, to visit Valerie. Uh, it's a great friendship between them. Father, just uh, just keep keep uh, keep us in line with your word, Father. Keep us uh, walking out in your will, Father. And let us be the lights of the world all around us, Father. And uh, just be with Pete and Missy as they go throughout their uh, day as their kids are sick. Father, I'm just asking for a quick healing and a quick recovery. Father, I'm asking you to be with Al. He had a small procedure yesterday, Father. You just don't want to get healed well his back, if you don't mind, Father. Yes. We love you. We bless your name. In the precious name of your son, Yahushua Hamashiach, we pray this. Amen. 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 And we also have Jerome and Maria with yes. us today. Sorry. I'm very Forgot. grateful they're back. I've missed Maria's beautiful face, and she's hiding behind my screen. I can't even see her. <laughs> So guys, listen, we, we kind of mentioned it in the very beginning of class, but how is y'all counting? How's he going to count the children? By the contribution of the half shekel. And how old do they have to be? 20. 20 years old. So 20 is the age of accountability. It's also the age that what? You'd be military eligible? Yes, you go to war at 20. You're fighting age at 20. You're old enough to make your own decisions at 20. You're a man. So at the age of 20, they, you're going to be counted. And they're not counting you by number. Like I said, they're not running you through a chute and counting you one, two, three. They're counting you by the shekels. So however many shekels are, are thrown into the, the basket, that's how many men we have over the age of 20 and plus. And the shekel is made of what? Silver. What does silver stand for? Redemption. Redemption. So he, we're, he's redeeming the first four guys. And he's giving all this money to who? The Levites. And they're going to use it for purchasing animals, for sacrifice, and for building of the temple. He said it's going to be, a, he actually says, 
It shall be to the children of Israel for a remembrance before Yahweh to make atonement for yourselves. So it will be forever before his face. So I'm thinking that it's going to be part of the Holy of Holies, maybe. Some part of the temple that is going to be created. Uh, they say that in your early 20s is when your brain's actually done developing. Oh, so, that's I mean, scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it makes more sense than the 18 that we, we live by. You know what I mean? Like yes. when you're 20, 22 is when your brain's actually done. So. And so we don't allow kids to start drinking at what age? 21. 20, oh, do we? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so it's been a long time. <laughs> it used to be 18. You just gave your age you away. You can't even buy cigarettes now. <laughs> yeah, you can't even buy cigarettes until you're 21 now. Yep. Yeah, I, I love that. I was 18, but I wasn't a drinker. So I, I, it didn't even, I'm like, okay, yeah, so, oh well. <laughs> I didn't. They need to raise the, the military enlistment age. In, in they do. Age. And also, listen, so you've got to be 21 to drink. The Bible says you're 20 when you're accountable. And yet, what do we have parents doing to their little children? They're telling them at age, what, four and five? Oh, I know you were born a boy, but you're really wanting to be a little girl. So, guys, listen. Shame on those parents. And you are what you're born with. That's your, that's your sex. Whatever y'all gave you when you were born, that's your that's your sexuality. And we need to train up our kids to deal with what they've got. Well, that's like my youngest enjoys dolls, but that's just because he's going to be a darn good dad. There's <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's like, what you tell them. You don't say, yeah, oh, he's, you must He likes taking dolls. care of babies. Okay, cool. And there's there's a lot nothing of, wrong with that. Listen, there's a lot of men out there that I would rather have been taking care of my children than me. I mean, yeah, that they're that good. Just with a, babies. Yeah, it's a case by case kind of thing. It is. It is. Strengths. So I'm, I'm just saying, look at the world we're living in today compared. Okay, so, uh, Seth, you want to start at uh, 17? Sure. Page 90. I've got to, I've got to trade it in pretty soon. Just, you know, put that one like on a pedestal or something. I know, it's like, I've got to walk. 90. One page back, I think. Oh, you know what? Oh, you already got the different version, don't you? You got the newer version. So, 30, 17. Okay. He's on page 90. I'm just saying. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't tell. I don't know. Okay. I'll look over your problems. shoulder. And you as both of my says saying, and you shall bring, or excuse me, you shall make a bronze basin, bronze of base, or excuse me, basin of bronze, with it stand also a bronze for washing. And you shall put it between the tent of appointment and the slaughter place, and shall put water in it. And Aaron and his sons shall wash from it their hands and their feet. When they go into the tent of appointment of when they come near the slaughter place to attend to burn an offering made by fire to Yahuwah, they wash with water unless they die, or unless they die. And they shall wash their hands and their feet, lest they die. And it shall be a law forever to them, to him and his seed throughout their generations. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, And take for yourself choice spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, and half as much, 250 of sweet-smelling cinnamon, and 250 sweet-smelling cane, and 500 acacia, according to the shekel of the set-apart place, and a hen of olive oil. Hold on just a second. Let's talk really quick about the labor and the washing of the hands and the feet. Guys, there, there are two different words for washing. Oh, I've got the volume on that. I'm trying to... Watch so that we can read everyone that's uh, coming on. Hey, Dennis Wilson, I voted for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, guys, the, the washing of the hands and feet before you enter into the tabernacle was very important because you had to be clean. And it represents what? What are we supposed to cleanse? Our hearts. Our hearts. Pure heart. And our mind. So we go in with a pure heart and mind. But there are three different words that all come from the base word used here for wash. This word is kivas, which it means to cleanse. But there is another word, which is kavod, which means to, well, that's his glory. But kavas actually has two different meanings. It can be just to wash 
or it can mean to wash from adultery. Oh, wow. So there's kavas. So when Yah spoke to them in, what was it, 19, Exodus 19? Let's see. When, when he told Moshe, I know, <laughs> where my Bible quit, <laughs> don't judge me. Uh, when he said, um, get the people ready. Okay, here we go. It was, it's uh, chapter 19 of Exodus. In verse 10, and Yahweh said to Moshe, go to the people and set them apart today and tomorrow, and they shall wash their garments, and they shall be prepared by the third day. For the third day, Yahweh shall come down upon Mount Sinai before the eyes. This washing that they're doing is like stomping and cleansing and purifying. Um, and it was more of washing from adultery or idolatry. Same thing. It is the same thing, guys, and we're going to see that as we get further in this Torah portion. Do you know what another root word of kevin is? It's kevin. <laughs> and it stands for the liver, which is the largest part, it's the largest organ, and you know this, Samantha, because you're in medicine. It's the largest organ in the body. What does the liver do? Filters. It's a filter. It cleanses all the impurities from the blood. Does it cleanse the impurities from the kidney? It doesn't. The kidney it purifies everything else, doesn't it? So you got the, the liver and then the kidneys that do all the cleansing and purifying, which is beautiful to me because it's the same thing as cleaning, which has everything to do with tomei and tahor. <coughs> clean, the clean being tahor and the unclean being tomei. I always mix those up. I do too because tomei is such a beautiful word. <laughs> it should be clean. Well, also, tamim means integrity and so that's where i confuse it yes because tamay sounds like tamim and tamim means integrity so i would think tamay meant clean but it's easy to do it's easy to do oh, also the liver is the only organ that regrows itself it is the only organ as long as you've got a smidgen of it left is it a third i know it I will think it's regrow third, itself right. my goodness yes yes <laughs> <laughs> mine should be shy <laughs> Guys, everyone's in shock because it's not just the alcohol, it's not just the drugs. Listen, it's the food that we consume. Sugar, yeah. the oh, vaccine. Oh. He said no, the no. word. I mean, the B word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. The, you know, say certain words on Facebook. The V that okay. goes into the body that causes, oh, uh, and doesn't really stop the C. Right, C? What C? There's no C anymore. I don't even know what y'all are talking about anymore. I'm so confused. <laughs> and Samantha's in medicine. She's like, oh, I don't know why I'm sitting here with these people. Okay, so I wanted to get into that because I wish I was. And I also wanted to make a, a very, very good point. In Mark, go to Mark 7, 1 through 8. Okay? Yeah. And Charles, would you read that for yeah, us? Yeah, I got it. One second. That was on my mind when you said that. It was on her mind. 1 through 8, Mark 7. Right. <clears throat> when the Pharisees and some of the scribes assembled to him, having come from Yushraq, and seeing some of his taught ones eat bread with, okay, I get what we're at. That is, uh, with unwashed hands, they found fault. With the Pharisees and all the Yehudim do not eat unless they wash their hands thoroughly, holding fast their tradition of the elders. And coming from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions which they have received and hold fast. Okay. Okay. No, I, I mean, okay. What What is he talking about? The Talmudic laws of of where they kind of they're that's, trying to protect the Torah laws, but they kind of you know got a little overboard. So and they raised them up on to that level. They did, and they they created law upon law upon law. It made that, it hard. It, it did. Yes. Yeah. It It made it impossible to even follow these laws. So this was a Talmudic law. You have to watch. more tradition than, you know, What does yeah. tradition do? Yeah. It nullifies the word of Yah. It numbs you, actually. It does. Yes. It numbs you. But, but literally, the word tells us that our manly traditions, such as Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day. We just had Valentine's Day. Guys, we didn't have any flowers in this office, did we? No. Because we don't celebrate... The day of Tammuz, huh? Yes, that's right. Yes. There, there you go. So, guys, it is so nice to be away from all that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, to be rid of the traditions. But 
our friends still cling to it. Yes, I was just going to mention that it is the first day of Adar. To, oh, today is the very yes, first last day. Yes, was pretty much a, Is it Adar 1 or 2? Well, it's the 12th month. It is the 12th yes, month. Ma'am. So we are, we are today, because yesterday evening, Valerie sent me a beautiful picture of the <laughs> sliver. And it was just barely, it was, it was barely visible. So where I was, I was <coughs> watching the skies. And I kept going, I see something up there. In fact, I told my husband, I was like, do you see something behind that cloud? He's like, uh-uh. It was right as the uh -uh. sun went no. down, it just popped right out. It was really beautiful. I, from where I was, I did not see it. So the sighting was yesterday, and I saw that Israel sighted it yesterday as well, which makes, at sunset, it became the first day of, uh, well, it was actually before sunset, wasn't it? Or was it after sunset? I didn't see it until after sunset. Okay. But... That was because I couldn't. So, yeah, that may be something to consider. I know. I'm like, if we saw it during the day, does that make it the day before? We're not going to go there. <laughs> there is enough discrepancy that a little on the calendar. We're not even going to ask that question. But it does line up with Parable of the Vineyard's calendar that they, he's already done. It, it does show. That yesterday. I'll have to send you that link. I'll like to see it. Okay. Okay. Do it. Okay, so guys, listen. I wanted to make sh make certain that y'all saw that the Pharisees were criticizing Yahusha, and in reality, Yahusha is a high priest. He wasn't on earth, and and Paul tells us that when he's on earth, he won't be our high priest because we have high priests perform those functions, and they will be from the tribe of, of uh, the Zadokian priests. But holding to traditions, so this is a law for who? It's a Levitical law for the Levites, not for the common people. Now, it is a good idea to wash your hands before you eat, isn't it, Charles? I mean, Common your... sense does not go out the window. No, it does not. So you tell your kids, go wash your hands, especially when they've been out there digging in the dirt, with playing with worms and frogs. Yeah, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> After David used the restroom, he said, why do I gotta wash my hands? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and and do you guys, do y'all make your kids wash their hands? Yeah, go wash your hands. You probably make them wash their face. No, I'm kidding. So, so I just. Her friend and her little kids all got pink eye. Yeah, it'll happen. Yeah. It's super um, contagious, too. Pink eye is very yeah. contagious. So, we've got that out of the way. Now we're going into the oils, which mm -hmm. you were reading about. Mm -hmm. And, guys, I, had, I saw, I was looking for this last night, but here's my little list of oils. The oils that they're going to be using we have myrrh, we have cinnamon, we have cassia. We actually have frankincense and galbamum, and there are many other oils, but this is a sacred oil. I've actually had people come up to me and go, hey, I've got some of the oil that's mentioned in, in Exodus, the compound. Uh-uh, uh, I, I don't want it. Then. I don't want to smell of it. I don't want to be near it. Look, because what, what I found fascinating with that story is that some of these products came from Asia. You know, like cinnamon was known to Go like in Indonesia and Philippines yes. and all that. So they traveled many miles to get wood. You know, they they had lots of trade going on back then, didn't they? But listen, where had they left? The biggest trade hub in the world. Egypt, which is where you're right. It was a huge trade trading center where everyone came to trade their wares, and a lot of those people who were trading those wares left with them. That was a world power back in the day. It was. It sure was. No more. Since that day, no more, because literally every male, I guess 20 years and older, was destroyed. Every single male. But um, but that is a very good point that uh, that you brought up, Jerome, is that a lot of these came from someplace else, but they came with them from Egypt when they left. Because what were the Egyptians going? Here, take all my money, you know, take my food, take my clothes, my gold, just leave. We don't want you here anymore. We just lost our firstborn children. Get out of here. Some lost their spouses. So go forward, young yeah. man, go forward. <laughs> yeah, we're not supposed to make them more and use them personally. You know? No, we're not Animal supposed to. Service. No, and what's interesting, I want you to read it, and then we're going to discuss that because it is really, really important. Okay. And you shall make from these a set-apart anointing oil compound blended the work of a perfumer. It is a set-apart anointing oil. And with it you shall anoint the tent of appointment and the ark of the witness and the table and all its utensils and the lampstand 
and its utensils in the slaughter place of incense, in the slaughter place of ascending offerings with all its utensils, in the basin and its stand. And you shall set them apart, and they shall be most set apart. Whatever touches them is to be set apart, and you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and set them apart to serve as priests to me. And speak to the children of Israel, saying that this is a set apart anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured out on the flesh of a man, and make no other like it according to its composition. It is, it is set apart, it is a set apart to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on a stranger, shall be cut off from his people. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, Take sweet spices, fragrant gum and cinnamon, and gobblenom, and clear frankincense with, the sweet, with these sweet spices, all in equal amounts. Then you shall make of these an incense, a compound, work of a perfumer, salted, clean, set apart. Mm -hmm. And you shall, you shall beat some of it, some of it very fine, and shall, uh, excuse me, and put some of it before the witness in the tent of appointment where I meet with you. It is set apart to you. It is most set apart to you. And the incense which you make, do not make any for yourselves according to its composition. It is set apart to you, to you for Yahuwah. Whoever makes any like it to smell it, he shall be cut off from his people. That's not good. And so we have a lot of people trying to create this. They don't know any better. They really don't know any better. They go in there, they see the compounding amounts, and they try to make this oil because they really and truly don't know any better because they haven't read the whole book. But guys, listen, what did they have here at the tabernacle? What was on top of the tabernacle covering everything? Skins. skins. We've got skins. We've got, um, we've got sacrifices going on. We've got blood sprinkled everywhere. We've got blood poured in uh, around the basin of the altar. So we have got a lot of things that bring bugs, right? These oils, and what's really cool is that the compounding of these oils, it's not like just having myrrh or frankincense or cassia or galbamum or any of the other oils that were by themselves. Once you compound them and mix them together, the frequency is like way higher than individually. So it becomes very, very, very potent. They use this to anoint everything in the tabernacle. The tabernacle itself, all of the holy utensils, the altar of, of uh, sacrifice, everything. They, they anointed everything with it. Do you know how much oil this made? And it was only made one time, and Moshe is the only one that made it, ever. Do you know how much was made? No. One gallon. And it was, do you remember the woman with Elijah, or with Elisha, that he said, go, she was poor, she was starving. He said, go get all the containers you can and start pouring, pouring oil, just the widow woman. And she poured and poured and poured until she filled everything up. She had no more jars and that was it. This was one of the miracles of the tabernacle. I mean, one of the miracles was that there was never a woman who miscarried in the tabernacle. Never a, a pregnant woman who miscarried. Another miracle was that there was never a fly seen in the tabernacle. To me, that's a huge miracle. But you have animals that cattle. Sacrifices. Yeah. You have all these dead, I mean, I've cleaned. Or even while they're alive, yeah. you have flies right. everywhere. With you, you know? Yes, you're right. Even when they're alive, they've got, they smell, and there are flies. But there was never a fly found. And the other, one of the other miracles is that there were, this, this oil never went away. So this oil was used to anoint Aharon and his sons and every high priest. I wonder if it's an awkward For about 500, it probably is because they say that Jeremiah hid it. So the oil is still there somewhere awaiting uh, to be used. I don't, I don't think it will be used in the Antichrist temple. No, I think it's going to be used in Yahusha's temple. But, but those are miracles that were there one gallon that lasted forever. So they anointed 12 kings in 500 and I think it's 541 years. And I'm probably wrong on those years, so don't write that year 
those years down until the the end of the first temple and when the end of the first temple went away the oil was not seen again so their assumption is that jeremiah hid the oil and i didn't see the oil mentioned in yasher did you Seth? i didn't read yasher okay the, so it, it it wasn't the book of yasher it was the book of baruch, uh, baruch. Yeah, it was six. Six. yes it was Look i don't at, remember the oil being i don't mentioned. remember the oil being mentioned but but it does say the priestly Arms. I think that's the hard. priestly garments were mentioned. Everything was mentioned, but I don't believe it said anything about the oil, the anointing oil. But it will be interesting to look that up. Okay, and now we get into. I'm going to read the the next little portion, and then we're going to skip over to the last of 31 because we're going to get through this very long Torah portion. It says the altar of incense. <coughs> the altar of incense. It doesn't say the oil. <coughs> the, the oil was there with in front of the witness is where it was kept so it was probably right there with everything okay 31 1 and y'all was spoke to Moshe saying see I have called by name Beth Salel son of Uri son of her of the tribe of Yehuda and Seth you're going to be talking about her shortly in the camp Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember the name her, but shadow of the light of a fiery light of, of Yah. And do you have anything else on that name? Yes. No. It says all the holy vessels. <clears throat> oh. So if those are what is what the oil could have been contained in, then all the holy vessels, whatever those are, were with it as well. They were in the tabernacle. Well, we're just going to assume that yeah, the oil went neat. wherever the angels went to hide them, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, we don't, we don't know. Right. We will know one day. We, we've, we've, heard, we've seen a lot of mm -hmm. people saying we found it here, we found it there. Um, okay, so Yuri, so son of, of Yuri, son of Har, of the tribe of Yehuda. So he is of the tribe of Yehuda. It's the shadow of the Lord is what his name basically means. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all works. Get away from Sorry. me. <laughs> Go away. It's just allergies. I need some oils. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Allergies are kicking my butt. Oh, it's kicking you everyone. You take a bulk I do not, but I need really healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Just for you, man. <laughs> you need to tell him what multivitamins. I'll you the ones I use. Yeah, I like them. Okay. I need to feel more focused and more energetic. Huh? Yeah, send me, me that. Send me a picture of that, Okay. Oh, me too. <laughs> Seth, read verse 4 because I can't read it. You want some colitocellum? My mom said you should spray it in your nose. <laughs> that is good. Oh, no, I'm okay right now. Maybe, maybe in a little while. It's not no over me. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm embarrassing. I'm on camera. <laughs> to make uh, designs for working gold and, and in silver and in bronze. Okay. And in cutting stones for setting and in carving wood and to work in all work. So he literally brought Betzel out with all the meanings. Listen, the guy was born of these families, right? From the tribe of Yehuda. He was born with all these talents. And with his name in the shadow of Yah. And I, look, I have appointed with him Aholiah, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. There was something neat about the tribe of Dan. So the Dalit means the doorway and the noon for Dan. So Dan is spelled the Dalit and the noon, which means the doorway to life, oh, wow. the revelation of life. So, um, means brother of support. Brother of what? Support. Really? Okay. Hmm. It's Ahi Samak, brother of support. Really? And Akolibah, Akolibah, is ten of his father. Ten of his father. So uh, if you add in, besides Betzalel, Yuri and her in the tribe of Yehuda, Give me that full meaning there. Can you do it? Oh wow, I need a notepad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could so long ago. I could give it to you, but I have to chunk it. <laughs> okay. 
And he said, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of everyone who is wise hearted and they shall make all that I have commanded you. The tent of appointment and the ark of the witness and the lid of atonement that is on it and all the utensils. So he literally, you know, it's in the protection. It's in the shadow of the protection of Yahweh. And Jerome is going to look it up and get even more specific. Now we're going to skip in 31 over to verse 17, I mean 12, not, not 17. Guys, listen. This commandment, which is the fourth commandment, and we were talking to Samantha, a friend of ours from Arkansas. We're not going to hold that against you. Uh, <laughs> we were telling her about the fourth commandment earlier. The fourth commandment is also equivalent to the fourth letter, which is the Dalet, which is the door. Do you want to spend time with Yah? You're going to have to go through the door, and the door is Yahusha. So the way to Yah is through Yahusha, the door. And it's the fourth commandment. Do it today. He tells us that his his the skies are open. He can hear you. The heavens are open. So okay. listen to 12, because this is, this guys, listen, it is so very important. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, And you speak to the children of Israel, saying, My Sabbath you are to guard by all means and it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations to know that i yahweh am setting you apart who's he talking to israel he's talking to all of all israel and he's talking to all of the so the sojourners, sojourners mm -hmm. the strangers who left egypt those traders those wealthy egyptians who left egypt because they just saw the god of israel wipe out Every little G God that Israel bowed down to. They just watched it. And that's who Yah said he went after, the mighty ones of Egypt, right? He didn't go after the people, but the people got hurt in the process. And the mighty ones served. That's right. That is right. And he said, and you shall guard the Sabbath. But, oh, I miss, I didn't emphasize this. It is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. It is a sign that you are covenanted. Everyone in this room is covenanted. If, if you are honoring Shabbat, if you are honoring his commandments, and why do we honor him? Because we love him. We love him. Oh, that's so simple, isn't it? Yes. Why did you, why were you obedient to your daddy? I love him. Respected because, him. That's right. Your dad brought you into this world, and that's what the commandments say, honor your father and your mother. It doesn't matter if they were good or bad. They brought you into this world. They conceived you, and they brought you into this world, right? So yes. we honor them. Well, there's a way to show how to teach us how to be honorable towards Yahuwah, so <laughs> that we would know how to do that already from our earthly parents. That is it. In a nutshell, Valerie, if we can't honor our earthly father, I'm going to tell, tell you something. There are a lot of children, and there may be some in this room, that you didn't have a good daddy. That daddy that you, that should have been, protecting you and shielding you and fighting. Listen, a daddy is willing to fight for his kids. Mamas are too. But if you didn't have that daddy there, willing to fight for your protection, willing to do whatever it took to make you okay, how are you going to know unconditional love from Abba Yah? You're not going to know it. So it, it, it takes a lot longer for people who didn't have that, that earthly father, that earthly daddy, that would, could wrap their arms around you and say, son, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what you're doing. I'm so proud of the man that you are. If you didn't have that daddy, because I'm going to tell you something. Abya is proud of every man in this room and every woman. And you don't have to worry about that <clears throat> because he loves you unconditionally. Even even in your darkest place, he loves you. <coughs> I'm coughing now. Thanks, Charles. Well, it's kind of like our own I'm not, children. I'm, I'm sneezing. <coughs> there's, there's nothing my children could ever do to make me turn away from them. <coughs> and I mean nothing. Yes. There's nothing that would make me stop wanting good for them or stop praying for them or reaching for them. Nothing. So I'm sure he feels the same way about us. <coughs> Although some of us have had rough roads and we don't understand the way our <coughs> parents were the way they were. We have different views of that today. That is wrong. Most of us. We can look back and see if, if a daddy didn't know how to love or a mama didn't know how to love, there was a reason. They were scarred themselves. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 
want a peppermint? <coughs> or do you want some myrrh? Yeah, give me some myrrh. Don't mess up. Don't be mixing it with anything. There's a whole gallon behind you. Do you mess up? Oh gosh, oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> wow, that's Some awesome. Some David, I gave you his peppermints. Oh, I did have coffee. Oh, great. I'm going to be attacked by a three-year-old because I'm eating his peppermints. He, he already forgot about them. <laughs> I guarantee you, he's done forgot about them. Until he comes in here and sees them from across the room. Oh, yeah. Are those my peppermints? Oh, Are yeah. you eating my peppermints? <laughs> and he can smell, so he can smell peppermints. <laughs> <laughs> Is that peppermint a smell on your breath? <laughs> no, <laughs> your daddy did it. <laughs> Is that red on your tongue? Okay. So, guys, you shall, I'm, I'm in verse 14, you shall guard the Sabbath, for it is set apart to you. Everyone who profanes it shall certainly be put to death. Listen, <clears throat> you get to choose life and death, don't we? Yes. Our daddy loves us, just as our earthly daddies love us. You get to choose. What did Moses say? Moses say? Moshe I said, I set life. before you life and death. Mm -hmm. Choose life and live and live it abundantly. Right? Mm -hmm. That's our daddy. That's how we young. He sets before us life and death. But what do we do? We make such bad choices, don't we? We choose wrong, don't we? Mm -hmm. I, I did for you. We follow the ways of the world. We follow the ways of the world. We follow the ways of our friends. Yep. The ways of the people that we are growing up with that we hang with we follow them and Yahushua said himself i want i hope that all will come to repentance he wants somebody open that for her he wants know. all to be saved he wants then that's coming from good. his father he wants everyone to turn everyone to turn to him yes it's just out of his own mouth you know guys turning back to young turning away from what but, but, but if i turn to seth who is my back to Oh, Am I listening to Charles? No. If I'm a multitasker, which I used to be, I'm not. Or if I turn back to Charles, then I've turned my back on Seth. It's the same thing with y'all. When you turn back to him, your eyes are focused on him. Your eyes are focused on his word, and it's not focused on life. And life is what drags us down, isn't it? Yes. It distracts us. It does. What is the peace? What does the peace of his word do? It allows you to deal with all those distractions without getting stressed. We're well, freezing everybody now. <clears throat> it, 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 the, and especially the peace of Shabbat. There is just, when the sun goes down, I'm like, <sighs> and I know everyone here, here feels the same. You breathe a sigh of relief because you no longer are having to run because Friday's preparation uh -huh. day. We've you got a business. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Usually on Wednesday, we're reminding each other, it's, it's almost here. It's yeah. almost here. We're almost <laughs> we're there. there. But on we're Friday, there. we're like rushing, trying to get everything done yes. before the sun goes down. Because after the sun goes down, we're done. We don't have to stress over it anymore. Literally, literally my mind shuts down on everything but y'all. It's amazing. It is amazing that y'all has blessed us with that. <clears throat> So he says here, it shall certainly be put to death if you're profaning Shabbat. For anyone who does work on it, that being shall be cut off from amongst his people. Six days work is done, and on the Sabbath is a Sabbath day of rest, set apart to Yahweh. Everyone doing work on the Sabbath day shall certainly be put to death. Mm. And the children of Israel shall guard the Sabbath to, go, to perform the Sabbath throughout their generations. And it is <coughs> what? Everlasting. An everlasting covenant. A covenant that they made with him on Mount Sinai. Our forefathers made this covenant on Mount Sinai. <clears throat> and they sealed it with a meal. And they salted that meal. And so it was a salted meal covenant, right? Every covenant is made with a meal. He said, between me and the children of Israel, it is a sign for ever. For in six days, Yahweh made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. <clears throat> you, mind, you mind if I read the Sabbath meal from here? Uh, hold on. Let me finish okay. this right here, and then we're going to go into okay. Jubilee. But, yeah, I want you to do that. Yes, do that. Let me finish this one okay. sentence. 
And when he had ended speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moshe two tablets. Yeah, go ahead and do it now. We'll get into something different And Yahuwah there. spoke to Moshe, saying, <laughs> Also speak thou with the sons of Israel, saying, You shall keep this, keep the day of my Sabbath indeed, for it is a sign between my word and you. My mm. word is Yahushua. And it was wow. John, John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. So it's pretty cool. that makes it even more... I mean, it, it yeah. stresses, well, it doesn't make it more important because with Yah, with Yahusha, Yahusha spoke nothing that he didn't hear the Father speak. Exactly. And he was in the beginning, so we know that in Bereshit, and listen, this is another interesting fact. In the word Bereshit, which means Genesis, it was in the beginning. Do you know that Shabbat is in that word? You've got the Shin, you've got the Bet, and you've got the Tom. Shabbat is in the Bereshit. Wow. <laughs> so it's right there. In the beginning was the Sabbath already before we even knew anything about it it was already there with the nail scarred hand which was our messiah which was our savior which we do not get into the kingdom without him you can honor every sabbath you can keep every commandment but without our, our the testimony of our savior yahushua who came and died for our rebellious rebellious sins listen there's sins that you do not get forgiven of except through Yahushua. Right. And that's rebellious sins, intentional rebellious sins. If you know better, and, and you might want to turn me off right now, because if you're listening and you're hearing and you now know better than what you've been doing, boy. You're no longer made to start. You no longer can say, I didn't know anything about that. You can't say that anymore because you were just told, Unless your ears are shut. And there's a lot of people that may be listening right now. Their ears may be shut. Okay, do you have more on no, this? That was it? Yeah. That's all? Yeah. That's all you got? Yeah. You got nothing more? Okay. Listen, I do want to pull some from <coughs> Jubilees 2. <coughs> 1. And it says, And the angel of the presence spoke to Moshe according to the word of Yahweh. The word of Yahweh, again. So the word of Yahweh is who? Yahushua. Yahushua, our Savior. Saying, Write the complete history of the creation, how in six days Yahweh Elohim finished all his work in that he created, and kept Shabbat on the seventh day, and sanctified it for all ages, and appointed it as a sign for all his work. And now look at 2.18. <clears throat> Seth? In Jubilees? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read 18-20. Uh, through 20. And all the, uh, all the angels of the presence and all of the angels of the sanctification, these two great classes he has bidden unto us, excuse me, bidden us to keep the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. And he said to us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a Hold on a second. Yeah. In the Sefer, mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, let me read it from here. And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath, the Shabbat, that we should work six days but guard this, the Shabbat on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he has bidden us to guard the Shabbat with him in heaven and on earth. And he said to us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and they shall guard the Shabbat, and I shall sanctify them unto myself as my people, and will bless them as I have sanctified the Shabbat, and do sanctify it unto myself. Even so will I bless them, and they shall be my people, and I shall be their Elohim. It's a sign. He says, Come and rest and celebrate Shabbat with me and my angels. Guys, we're Stays doing what they're us. doing. We're doing what they're doing in the kingdom right now. I mean, maybe not for us, maybe for us if we were doing it at the same time in Israel, because we know that Israel is the belly button of the world. It's the apple of Yah's eye. His heart has never turned away from Israel. Now he's he booted them out. He burned their house down so they couldn't come back. But what does he say in Hosea? I'm going to bring them back home. I'm going to bring my children back home. I'm going to gather them from the four corners of the earth. And I'm going to bring them back home. And guys, that day, listen, 
They're preparing. Israel is preparing for that day. <clears throat> They're getting things ready. Because they know the Messiah is coming soon. Because six days we labor, seventh day we rest. Six thousand years we labor. Seven thousand year, which is the millennial, we rest. We're we're at the end. What is the what is the year on the, the Hebrew calendar? Fifty seven eighty two? Almost. And they think it's off about two hundred. Ooh, and if it's off two hundred, it would be fifty nine. 82, which get, would give us about 28. It's almost 82. It's 5781. Huh? It's 5781. Okay, but they, they say that they got off 200 years oh. on Abraham's calendar. So if they got off the 200 years on Abraham's birth, then it would be 5982. Oh well, and 82 would actually begin in, in, uh, at Yom Teruah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, almost there. There's Different there are two different New Years. There's a spiritual and uh, agricultural, and <clears throat> two different calendars, actually. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit further. He said, I have yes. chosen the seed of Yaakov from amongst all that I have seen, and have written him down as my firstborn son, and have sanctified him unto myself forever and ever. And I will teach them the Sabbath, that they may guard the, the Shabbat there, thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should guard the, the Shabbat with us on the seventh day to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things as he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples and that they should guard the Shabbat together with us. I told you you were weird. Peculiar. Mm. You too. You are peculiar people. You're Yah's peculiar people. Everyone in this room, you're peculiar people. If you're doing... Something different from what the world do, is doing. Are we of this world? No. <clears throat> are we supposed to love this world? No. No. We love the people in this world. We are commanded to do that. Love your neighbor as yourself. Who's your neighbor? It doesn't end, does it? No. It's the person standing next to you in the in the grocery store. It's the person standing next to you at work. It's your enemies too. It is your enemies that Especially you're supposed to love those. and bless. How easy is it to love those loving? So easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If somebody loves you to death, it's like so easy to return that love. But if someone is continuously talking, what is it called, smack? Yes, talking smack. Talking, talking smack, smack about you. Is it? Is it don't you want to just love them to pieces? Oh, yeah. It's hard to do that, guys. But we're supposed to pray for them. We're supposed to love them unconditionally, regardless of how they feel for us. Right? So, it's not the easiest thing we've ever done. No. I was going to say, I hear little voices. I love little voices. That must have been awesome. Okay, I'm going to read 33 also in this same. And actually, all of two is just amazing because it's all about Shabbat. We're going, to get, we're going to get through with this. I know we are. <clears throat> and the creator of all things blessed it, but he did not sanctify all peoples and nations to guard the Shabbat thereon, but Yasharel alone. Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to guard the Shabbat there, thereon on the earth. And the creator of all things blessed this day, which he had created for blessing and holiness and glory above all days. This Torah and testimony was given to the children of Yasharel as a Torah, forever unto their generations. Now that sounds like it was maybe just for Yashra. But what do we do? What, <clears throat> we choose. Yes. Just like Ruth. What did Ruth say to Naomi? Your people. Your people. Your people are my people. Where you go, I go. Your God is my God. Where you die, I die. I choose to be Yashra. So we have to make that choice. And it has to be a conscious choice, doesn't it? Graft yes. into the wild olive tree and the good olive tree. That's yes. right. I love it. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Mm -hmm. And you begin to produce fruit. Once you're grafted into that tree and those roots are Israel, that tree is Yahusha. He is that root and that tree. I'm divine. That's We're it. all one. We are all one. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and isn't it amazing that it doesn't matter <clears throat> whether you were a stranger or Israel. You were counted by half a shekel. No one was more important. No one was less important. 
the rich couldn't buy stature. There was no buying. They couldn't come in and give a thousand shekels to become more important. It was half a shekel for every person, no matter who you are, no matter what you did, no matter if you were gifted to be, like Betzalel, to be able to do everything in the temple. Didn't matter. He gave half a shekel. Huh? Doesn't matter, huh? We come as we are, but we don't stay as we come. Huh? It's like the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Oh, yeah. Yes. Give us that parable. You know, you got the ones who start working early in the day, promised a silver piece, and then you got the ones who only worked an hour, and they were promised that they were given the same silver piece. And they get aggravated. It also relates to the reunification of the two houses. Judah's like, well, I've been here doing this the whole time. And you're going to pay them the same. That's exactly right. And that, that is a good comparison. I like that. So it's like Yehuda. So who's been in, well, we don't know that they're really from the tribe of Yehuda. Maybe they've chosen to be the tribe of Yehuda. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's it's a lot the of discrepancy. That's, that's right. Yeah. Just like a choosing to be used right now. But they've been keeping the Torah. But have they been keeping the Torah or have they been keeping the Talmud? Talmud. Our friend. Ta Torah or Talmud? You don't believe in Talmud? Yes. And he actually likes the Pacifica. Huh? He actually reads the Pacifica too. You know? Ooh. He's our kind of guy. Yeah. I'm telling you. So guys, a lot of the books that we do study, they were removed from scriptures, from the King James, from the Geneva Bible, back in the 1600s and 1700s. And why would they not remove them? Now, Enoch was never in there. But why would they, why would they remove all these books? Because it tells them how to live. Talks about keeping the commands and guarding the Torah. Yes, the Sabbath. but there was never really a list of what we should read and what we should not read. You know? mm -hmm. No, but in the book of Ezra, mm -hmm. Ezra actually came together with five other scribes, or was it four other scribes? Came and, with two hundred fifteen books. They came up with I think it was ninety something, thirty something of them uh, were, published. For, were published, and the rest were saved yeah, for yeah. who? For the last time. For the end of times. Yeah. That's us. So yeah, I mean. If Ezra read it and y'all gave it to him, I won't read that. I will, and, and some of those books are, are so, like the, the first book of Adam and Hua, that is one of the most remarkable books. When you read it alongside scripture and, and rate it if, if it, if it goes against anything in scripture, I, I'll toss it out. But if you can verify everything through scripture that's in there, I'm going to say it's a good read. And it's to be used and to build a century, the Ethiopians <laughs> and uh, the Kumara community also. Yes. Well, and they're, they've kind of traced Kum the Qumran community to be Zadok. Mm. Zadok, when they left Israel or Jerusalem, it, they're pretty sure they went to Qumran because they created a little city that almost looked Modern exactly left like Israel. Before they Jerusalem. got to be in the vault. They left. Yeah. Um, very, the Babylonian. it was around that time. It sure was. And you know, the, the Maccabees, they that said, the they, well, they were revol revolting against the Greek, Roman, but the Maccabees said that they were from the tribe of Zadok. Did they? Mm -hmm. That's where the Pharisees come from, the Maccabees. Oh, really? Uh, wow. I haven't read that. I'll, I'll have I'll have to verify that, sir. I recommend you do. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Send me that information for real, okay. because that that kind of changes a lot of stuff. Okay, but <clears throat> we're in thirty-two. We only have three more chapters. You're doing great. Okay, so um, we have Moshe. He has gone up on Mount Sinai. What? I'm yes. sorry. I just love it. Like how? What? Well, let's start right here. Thirty. Thirty-two. Oh. One. And when the people saw that Moshe. When the people saw that Moshe was so long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aharon <clears throat> and said to him, this, this is where it gets good, Arise and make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of, of Mitzrayim, we don't know what has become of him. And Aharon said to them, Take off the gold earrings which are in the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people took off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aharon. And he took this from their hand and 
excuse me, and he formed it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, this is your mighty one. They said that. Agavon did not say that. They said, this is your mighty one, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. How quickly, in 40 days, have they totally forgotten Moshe? This is just like we do. I mean, we... Guys, I want you to listen to me. We're here. This is us. Yes. We have forgotten that our Messiah is coming back. We're like that Yahusha. We don't know what's happened to him. Let's replace him with someone else. Yeah. Let's just do our own thing. Whatever it's exactly what they good. did. It's exactly what they did. We can't stand back and judge them for what they did. After 40 days, yeah. we might get a little bit antsy too. In fact, some of us wouldn't make 15 <laughs> days. We'd be like, he's been gone 15 days. What if what happened? What are we going to do? He let us out? Then he abandoned us? What are we going to do? So we can't really judge them. <clears throat> but guys, do you know the day that he went up? Do you know what day it was? It was the first of the sixth month, the month of Elul. And this is the month that, that, that everyone says the king is in the field. Okay. Yahushua is in the field. This is the month to repent. It's a month of cleaning the slate. We want to clean the slate before those the ju books of judgment are closed, don't don't we? Okay, so he, he went up there on the first of Elul. He came down on the tenth of the seventh month. What is that? I missed what you said. The first of the tenth month? The tenth of the seventh month. Tenth of seventh. It's what? No. No. The tenth day of the seventh month. So in the seventh month, on the first day, we have Yom Teruah, yes. the blowing, the announcing of the trumpets. Okay. And then ten days later, we have Yom Kippur. Guys, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur is the day of atonement. On the day of atonement, our our Moshe was up there on this mountain, yes. fasting and praying and and repenting for them. Wow. And that's just, that's actually the second set of 40 days that, that he does this, okay? Okay. So he took this from their hand, formed it into with an engraving tool, made a molded calf, and they said, This is your mighty one, O Israel, and brought, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Aharon saw and built a slaughter place before it. He built an altar for it. And Aharon called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yah. And they rose early on the next morning and offered ascending offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to what? To play. <laughs> Aye. Um, Aharon has mixed the holy with the profane. It's what he's done. And Yahweh said to Moshe, go and get down for your people <laughs> whom you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim have corrupted themselves. Now, who told Moshe to go get those people. It was yeah. y'all, wasn't it? On yeah. the same mountain, on Mount Sinai. Yeah, my people. He, he, he was that burning bush. He was in that burning bush that said, Moshe, come, come <clears> over <throat> here. Take your shoes off because you're on holy land. You're going to go to Egypt. You're going to leave my well, children out. You're not his people if you're not keeping the covenant. That's so right. Your people, Moshe. Get that. Oh, I like that. Oh. So he's saying, right now, these are not my people. They're not keeping yeah, my covenant. They're yeah. your people. But they weren't keeping Moshe's covenant either. Because yeah. Moshe gave them all the covenant. So I like that. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to use that. Uh, go down. Get for your people whom you brought out of the land of Mitzvah have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them, and they have made themselves a molded calf and have bowed themselves to it. They're bowing down to this man-made idol <clears throat> and slaughtered to it and said, This is your mighty one, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Yahweh said to Moshe, I have seen this people, and see, it is a stiff-necked people. What does stiff-necked mean? Stubborn. Unwilling. Capable of bowing the head. Unwilling, incapable of bowing the head or being subjected to a covenant. Unwilling and incapable of obedience, guys, is what it is. And now, let me alone, that my wrath might burn against them and I consume them and I make you a great nation. Who in this room wouldn't go, I'm all for that because I'm sick and tired of hearing them complain, make me a great nation, I'm ready, let's do it. Listen, if Yah had done that, he would not have broken his covenant with Abraham, Yishak, 
in Yaakov. Do you know that? Correct. His covenant would not have been broken because Abraham was from the tribe of Levi. It still would have been Israel. So, but Moshe... It was also a little bit of a test for Moshe. It was a huge test for Moshe because Yah would not have done that. But Moshe pleaded with Yahweh, his Elohim, and said, Yahweh, why does your wrath burn against your people? Hmm. Moshe is saying, these are my people, they're your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a strong hand. Why should the Mitzrites speak and say, for evil he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from the heat of your wrath and relent from this evil to your people. And remember Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov. And guys, listen. He's reminding Yah of his covenant with Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov, your servants to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I increase your seed like the stars of the heavens. And all this land that I have spoke, spoken of, I give to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. <clears throat> and Yah re relented from the evil which he said that he would do to his people. And Moshe turned. He went down from the mountain, and in his hand were the two tablets of the witnesses, tablets written on both of their sides, written on one and then on the other. And the tablets were the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim engraved on the tablets. And Yahushua, Yahushua, excuse me, Yahushua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, and he said to Moshe, a noise of battle in the camp. Now, what was Yahushua doing with Moshe? He waited for him. So he didn't go all the way up with Moshe, but he waited for Moshe when Moshe came back. The young lad, Moshe's young lad, went with him, and he's like, I hear a fight going on. But Moshe said, it is not the sound of those who shout of might, nor is it the sound of those who cry out in weakness, but it's the sound of singing that I hear. Uh-oh. Not good, is it? And it came to be, as soon as he came near the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moshe's displeasure burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hand, and he broke all ten of the commandments right there at the foot of the mountain. He broke the, the tablets that y'all had just gave him. And he took the calf which they had made. And before I go into this part, let's listen to Seth's rendition from the Targum. Which one? Beginning of 32 or where you were at just now? Um, I want to, to hear what was going on in the camp. Okay. Who was dancing to the Israel? It was you know, breaking on my nose. <laughs> it, who, who, who helped that calf come out? Aaron, was that a trick question? Satan. Huh? Just not Okay. <laughs> and it, it was, and it was when Moshe came near to the camp that, uh, and saw the calf and the instruments of music and in the hands of the wicked. Who were dancing and bowing before it, and Satan among them, dancing and leaping before the people. And the wrath of Moshe was suddenly kindled. And he cast the tablets from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. And the holy writing was on them, however, flew and was carried away into the heavens. And he cried and said, Woe, to, woe upon the people who are heard at Sinai from the mouth of the Holy One. So, so the words themselves went up into the mountains. Mm -hmm. But what you're going to see is that Hasatan was here when... Oh, in the beginning? <laughs> Quit turning that page. <laughs> it, like, okay. Oh, at the beginning. Yes. Uh, this is the beginning of 32. And uh, when the people saw that Moshe delayed to come down from the mountain, from the mount, the people gathered to, together to Aaron. When they saw that the time he had, he had appointed to them had passed, and Satan had come, and caused them to err, or to do wrong, or sin, and perverted their hearts with pride. What, 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 what was the cause of Hasatan's fall from heaven? Pride. Pride. That's one of the hardest deals, is it, pride. It is very hard, yep. and so he's now perverted their hearts with the same pride. Who is this man? I mean, he probably went in there. Who is this man Moshe think he is? He's gone. He's left you. He's abandoned you. Yep. And here you are. You're so great and mighty and special. You're so special. You don't need him. You don't need him. Here's a cow. <laughs> and he's made a goal. Yeah. Okay, so what does it say about the golden calf? Okay, it says, uh, These in Israel are thy gods, which brought thee forth 
from the land of Mitchell, for Aaron had seen her slain before him and was afraid. Okay, wait. So, who is her? He's the grandfather of Belzael. Mm -hmm. Belzael was the son of Uri, which was the son of her. So, he was the grandson of her. So, Aaron had just seen her slain by these yeah. people. That's so what he, was, he was like scared. Yeah, they just killed her, so and not like H-E-R, but H-U-R, yeah. and so what are they going to do to me? Yep. So Aaron cried with a doleful voice and said, Let there be a feast before Yahuwah tomorrow of the sacrifice of the slain of, the, of, the, of these adversaries who have denied, you, their, who have denied their Lord and, they, and have changed the glory of Shekinah of the Lord of this calf. And Aaron saw. Okay, I just read that. This is interesting. Good. But one thing that always blew me away was, you know, when Moshe said, What did these people do to you? And Aaron said, Ah, I just threw all this gold in and it came out as a cow. Yeah. In the Targum, it literally says that Hasatan formed it. Yes. As a calf. Do you see where it is? Oh, let's see. So while, while Seth is looking at that, I want to tell you something. What did people stack up to, to show there's been a covenant made? Rocks. Stones, rocks. What are the tablets? Stones. Y'all put his covenant on the stones. When those stones were broken, it should have meant imminent death for every person in that camp. Everyone in that camp should have been killed at that point because that covenant had been completely broken. But Yah's mercy, Yah's mercy, is that not amazing? You're going to still continue. Hmm. Well, Hasatan, somewhere in the Targum, it said that he did help form it into the golden calf. Now we're going to go forward. And this is one of my favorite parts. This is my favorite part of this whole Torah portion. Okay. So, in verse 20 of chapter 32. Thank you, Bailey. You keep me in hot coffee all the time. You keep me energized. <laughs> And he took the calf which they had made, he burned it in the fire, he ground it into powder, and he scattered it on the face of the water and made the children of Israel drink it. Who drank it? All the ones that said they could see who had made the golden earth. Who no, that's not true. Who? who drank it? He said, all. Oh. oh, really? It wasn't just, listen, at this point, he, they didn't know who had sinned. Oh, uh, yeah. They've come into the camp. He didn't know who sinned yet, does he? So he made every single person drink this. Um, he said, all the children of Israel drank it. And Moshe said to Aharon, what did these people do to you that you brought the, such a great sin upon them? And Aharon said, do not let the displeasure of my master burn. You know that this people, it is evil. And they said to me, make us a mighty one who go before us. For this Moshe, the man that brought us out of the land of Mitzvah, we do not know what has become of him. And I said to them, Whosoever has gold, let them take it off. And they gave it to me. I threw it into the fire, and this calf came out. It says, whoever, whoever has the gold, let him deliver it and give it to me. And I cast it into the fire, and Satan entered, entered, entered into it. And there came out of the similitude of this calf. So Satan entered into the fire, mm -hmm. and all that gold he cast into it, he didn't have to even mold this calf. Hasatan said, I'll give you, you want an idol? I'll give you an idol. So guys, one of the first of the commandments says, do not make an idol. Yep. Why? Molded image of me or any other gods. Don't make a molded image of any other gods. Why? Because there's only one you do it. And that's, that's Elohim. I mean, that's who we're supposed to love, man. He's either Elohim or Satan. Okay, can an idol talk? No. no. Does an idol have eyes? No. Can it can it hear? Can well, it, it has eyes, but they don't work. 
They, they, have, they have eyes, but they can't see. It's like a lot of people today. They have eyes, yeah, but they can't see. Metaphor. They have like ears, that. but they can't hear. I like that. That's a good one. So we're like idols. Okay, can they walk? Can they stand up by themselves? They have to be prop, don't they? Who did y'all make in the image of himself? Us. Us. The only image that should ever be of y'all is us. We are that walking, hearing, seeing, speaking image of Yahweh. He created us to be the image of Him. That's the only thing that should... When high priest goes in, he is, as, he is the holiest man around, isn't he? He gets to enter into the Holy of Holies. He is the image of Yah. Okay, <clears throat> now... What has the tribe of Israel done? Have they committed a sin? What did what sin was, have they committed? Idolatry. Idolatry. They've also committed because listen, they, there was some playing. There was some playing going around uh, while they were there. We're going to go over to Numbers five, and I want you to listen to this because what Moshe did by cooking that calf, grinding it into a fine dust, and spreading it on the living water, and then forcing the people to drink it. It is the Torah for the adulterous woman. It's the Torah for, for jealousy. So we are going to look at this, and we are going to start in verse 11. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any man's wife turns aside and has committed a trespass against him, and a man has intercourse with her, and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband, and it is concealed that she has defiled herself, and there are no witnesses against her, nor was she caught. And a spirit of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife who has defiled herself. For a spirit of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife, although she has not defiled herself. Then the man shall bring his wife to the priest, and he shall bring the offering for her, one-tenth of an ephah of barley, flour. He is not to pour oil on it or put frankincense on it, but it is a grain offering of jealousy, an offering for remembering, for bringing crookedness to remembrance. And that priest shall bring her near and shall make her stand before Yahweh. And the priest shall take set apart water in an earthen vessel and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the dwelling place and put it in the water. Doesn't that sound yummy? He's taking the dust, he's putting it in the water. And the priest shall make the woman stand before Yahweh and shall uncover the woman's head and shall put the offering for remembering in her hands, which is the grain offering for jealousy. And while the priest holds in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse, and the priest shall make her swear and say to the woman, If no man has lain with you, and if you have not turned aside to uncleanness under your husband's authority, be free from this bitter water that brings a curse. But if you have turned aside under your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself with some other man, with your with some other man other than your husband has lain with you, then the priest shall make this woman swear with the oath of the curse, and he shall say to the woman, Yahweh make you a curse and an oath among your people. When Yahweh makes your thigh waste away and your belly swell. And this water that causes the curse shall go into your inward parts and make your belly swell and your thigh waste away. And the woman shall say, Amen and Amen. And all of this is done, and it is called the Torah of Jealousy. In, in uh, verse 29, he tells us there, it's the Torah of Jealousy. When a wife turns aside under her husband's authority and defiles herself. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hello. Very good. Welcome. Lalo. Yes. <laughs> I'm Vicki. This is Seth. This hey. is Charles. Oh, nice Valerie. Nice Bailey. Bethany. Grant. And it's very nice to meet you. Thank Welcome. You so Thank you. Would you like some coffee? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can sit here. You can sit over there. Oh, or you can come up here and sit with us. <laughs> Lalo, feel free at any point because we're very open here. Anytime you've got anything to say, I would love to hear from you. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, I think that you probably have a lot to share with us. So we're just going over the test for the adulterous wife, which is in Numbers 5, which is drinking the bitter water. And if she's guilty, her thigh wastes away and her belly swells. So she looks kind of deformed, doesn't she? Her heart and pain. That's right. She's going to be hurting too? 
So. I would think so too. If her be uncomfortable. she would be very uncomfortable with a swollen belly and a rotted thigh. And so this is exactly what Moshe did to the children of Yisrael. All drank. Were all guilty? No. But all had to drink. And guys, it's the same in the end. In the end time, when our Messiah comes back, we'll all drink from this cup. We'll all be guilty? No. But listen to this. So um, Moshe said to Aharon, yeah, 22. We're in Exodus 32, 22. And Aharon said, do not let the displeasure of my master burn. You know that this people is evil. And they said to me, Make us mighty ones that go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us out of the land of Mitzrayim. How far did I read? And I'm reading all over again. Oh, 24. And I said to them, Whoever has gold, let them take it off. And they gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire. And this calf came out. So this calf just popped out. What we know, and what Seth just read from the Targum, is that Hasatan entered into that fire and made that calf. And 25. And Moshe saw that the peoples were let loose, for Aharon had let them loose to their shame amongst their enemies. And Moshe stood in the entrance of the camp and said, guys, listen, he's standing in the entrance. What does that remind us of? Threshold covenant. He's standing at the doorway. He's looking at them. He said, whoever is for Yahweh, come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves to him. And he said to them, Thus said Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, Each one put his sword on, on his side, pass over to and from each gate, from gate to gate in the camp. And each one kill his brother, and each one kill his friend, and each one kill his relative. Ooh, that's a hard task. That would be very hard. Listen, kill your son. Anyone who, anyone that you're going to see, what, what do we know? They all just drank the bitter water. How, how are these Levites going to know who to kill? Their bellies are swollen. They're going to be looking kind of weird. They're going to have a rotted thigh and a swollen belly. They're going to be on the ground. Hey. Jerome says they're on the ground withering and writhing in their it pain. Like a it does, doesn't it? I mean, everyone who's had a swollen belly, you know that it's painful. Or just imagine a stomach ache. You just want to kind of crawl oh, and lay around. Oh. Like my wife on the couch back there right now. Uh, yeah. Every day. Oh, I don't see rough her. Pregnancy. No, in she's the back. Like, right. Oh, I was like. No, she's she's in the I back right now with, with the babies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a rough pregnancy. Oh, I'm so sorry. But think of the joy that will come. Oh yeah. Very this too soon. Shall pass. It shall. It shall. <laughs> so so Moshe just told all his Levite relatives, go forth in the camp, kill everyone you see that has take drank of this water and shows the sign of infidelity to Yah, because they have committed adultery, idolatry. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of, of Moshe, and about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. And Moshe said, you are ordained for Yahweh today, since each one has been against his son and his brother, so as to bring upon you a blessing today. And it came to be on the next day that Moshe said to the people, and we're going to stop for just a second, I want us to read Le uh, Revelation 8.10. You want to go to it? Sure. In Revelation 18, we're going to read about bitter water that will come in the last days. And while Seth is going there, I'm going to drink a little sip of hot coffee. About wormwood, huh? Uh, about wormwood, that's it. And a third messenger sounded, and a great star fell from the heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the foundations of water, or excuse me, fountains of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third of the waters became wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. Does it say a third of the men died anywhere? No? third of the waters became third of the waters. So it didn't fall in the ocean, did it? It fell on the rivers, and it fell on the fountains. Everything that you would use to drink. So a third of the waters, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to venture to say... If it didn't fall on the seas and it's a third of the waters, it might be every river and every lake that would have been available may have been contaminated because the rivers flow into the lakes. Yeah. So possibly everything that would have been used for drinking water would have been contaminated. That's not going to be good. You're going to be sick. <laughs> you are going to die. Um, 
right? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm not evil. <laughs> okay. Verse 32. And now, if you would forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book, which you have written. You know what is very interesting? Last week's Torah portion, Moshe's name didn't appear at all. But guess what? Chapter 37, he doesn't appear in there either. So, Yah did blot his name, but Yah said, I'm not going to blot your name from my writings. Yah was said to Moshe, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. But, since Moshe offered, he did go ahead and take him out of one book, and actually the Torah portion from last week. So, um, I thought that was interesting. So, it wasn't in last week. It wasn't in last week. Okay. What? That is the one that I But I the week see. before is the one that you were in the... I was in the wrong one. You week. were in the wrong it one. It was the 20th Torah portion. Yes, he was not. It ended up, I guess that's how... It was something that going on with the letter even that uh, Isaac had mentioned on this. Somebody called it when you were talking to Well, I scribbled it out because I was like, oh, that's not it. But I was on the wrong week that week. Well, that's it. So, guys, listen, do you know when, when one, one thing, something that you said reminded me of it, but when they anointed the high priest and the priest, you know what they anointed them with? The oil, right? That they had just, that Moshe had just concocted, blended from all of the oils. Do you know what they did? What was the sign they put on their, their forehead when they anointed them? It was the paleo top. X, yeah. What the X? So it was the X. Hmm. Because so, you know, for Ash Wednesday, they put that X too. Well, they put a cross. Okay. Well, they do a cross. It's up and down a cross for. Yeah. Well, and, and it can look like. Yeah. It can look like the top. Because the top, the top yeah. is a cross. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the X. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yep, it does. But they put more of a cross. But paleo. but the way they do it, it does look like a, a paleo top. But how many times does Hasatan imitate? Everything. He imitates everything because he can't come up. I shouldn't even say that. He can't come up with things on his own, can he? Mm -hmm. He has to imitate y'all. Well, how else will he deceive everyone if he's not masquerading his life? There you go. Mm -hmm. I will like that. It's true. It's it is very, very true. So he said, Now go lead the people to the place which I have spoken to you. See, my messenger goes before you, and his messenger is Yahusha. And in the day of my visitation, I shall visit their sin upon them. And y'all will plague the people because they made the calf which Aharon had made. So they had a plague also. He's telling them, get away from this holy mountain. Go on to the land. And 33. And Charles, you want to read? 33. And Yahweh said to Moshe, come, go up from here. You and the people whom we have brought out of the land of Mitzrayim, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and Yaakov, saying, To your seed I give it. And I shall send my messenger before you, and I shall drive out the Canaanite, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Yebusite, to a land flowing with milk and honey, for I do not go up in your midst, because you are stiff necked people, lest I consume you on the way. And when the people heard this evil word, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. And Yahweh said to Moshe, say to the children of Israel, You are stiff-necked people. Mm -hmm. Should I go up in your midst for one moment, I shall consume you. And now, say that again. take off your ornaments, and I shall know what to do to you. So the children of Israel took off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. And what, Moshe, what do you think the ornaments were all about? Um, it, it kind of elevated them. Yeah. Made them look special. Made them look good. So... But he's like, I'm, I'm not even going to deal with you while you're wearing your ornaments. Valerie had mentioned it to me, and I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, humbling. he humbled them. That, that, that is it right there. Okay. Well, I mean, you ask this day, what is it Yahweh your name wants of you? But to fear him, to walk in all his ways, I don't remember all the wording. But, uh, and, and then that's why he led them through the wilderness for those four years. And to, humble to humble them and to test him, to see, are you still going to stand for me no matter what comes, right? I'm so sorry that you're not feeling good. Yeah, I feel fine. It's just these stupid allergies getting my sinuses all out they, of whack. They are stupid. Well, it doesn't help that we've been scraping a hundred-year-old house. It's probably got lead paint. Uh, my, my, 
my 40-year-old house is still waiting for you to come paint me. Hey, we're going to get to you eventually. I'll, I'll talk to you about I'll message you, okay? Witnesses. I, I, I tell you, Joe, it's crazy. I heard it. There's not enough people to do the work. It's crazy. Listen, that's happening everywhere. Is it? Guys, if you want a job, get in touch with Charles. Maybe. But, uh, anyways, not on the Sabbath. Wait till the Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I shouldn't have even brought that up. <laughs> It happens. We all have our moments. Yeah, I did. The same thing. I had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> my biggest thing I have to catch myself doing is I'll get up and I'll maybe even have a study on in the morning or something, and I'll just instantly go to Facebook. I'm like, what am I doing? No. I just put my phone on the other side of the room. <laughs> that is a good idea. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I get distracted. Okay. Um, we're still talking people. I think it was in verse 6 or 7. And Moshe took his tent and pitched it outside the camp, far from the camp, and called it the Tent of Appointment. And it came to be that everyone who sought Yahweh went to the Tent of Appointment, which was outside the camp. And it came to be whenever Moshe went out to the tent, that all the people rose, and each man stood at his tent door and watched Moshe until he entered the tent. And it came to be when Moshe entered the tent that the column of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tent, and he spoke with Moshe. And all the people saw the column of cloud standing at the tent door, and all the people rose and bowed themselves, each one at the tent, at the door of his tent. Thus Yahweh spoke to Moshe face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. And he would have returned to the camp, but his servant Yahashua, son of Nun, a young man, did not leave the tent. Hold on. Okay. Hold on one minute. I'll hold on. Yahashua, what is he doing inside the tent? Learn. Right? Is he a Levite? Is he a high priest? Mm -hmm. yeah. He never leaves the tent. He's a faithful servant. He is a faithful servant. It's almost like he has been adopted by Aharon, and he's in there as like another surrogate son, isn't it? I well, mean, because he can't be in there. There's always... Literally. Moshe, well, yeah, Moshe is a Levite, but Moshe's of the... It's kind of like, hey, you, always, you have the Levites who tend to the temple service, but they're not necessarily the ones who would have taught Torah. It would have been the uh, the, the prophets or the uh, the Melchizedek priest line that would have taught the word and how to carry it out. But I mean, the law says no one enters into the the set apart place except the sons of Ahel on. Mm. In fact, they couldn't even even the ones transporting uh, the Levites, the Levite brothers that mm -hmm. were transporting the holy uh, articles. They had to be covered by Ahel on and his sons before they could even touch them. But at this so they point, even see them. at this point, we just now had Betzalel start working on it. it. Presumably, it's not completed yet because we read in verse seven, he pitched his tent mm -hmm. and pitched it outside, far from the camp, and called it the tent of appointment. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not the completed tabernacle yet. But he still never left that tent. Mm -hmm. I mean, Yahushua, he never left it. I think he was adopted. This is my guess. Does it say anything in the Targum about what? about Yahashua because I mean he is not a Levite yeah, it says it, he, he would a, be a stranger it says uh, but his ministry Yahashua bar, uh, bar none a young man removed not from the tabernacle so he's basically a minister that's all it really says but he had to be also conducting what you know whatever needed to be conducting right he couldn't just be standing there with his hand in his pocket <laughs> He may have just been in there uh, soaking up the Shekinah glory because he, I mean, he succeeded Moshe and Moshe was leading them, but he wasn't from the tribe of Levi. And this, he wasn't even from the tribe, so he wasn't even a Levi, but even more importantly, he wasn't even from the tribe of Aharon, so he shouldn't have been anywhere inside. The only thing I can assume, and I'm, I'm really bringing this up because I'm really interested to see. Maybe somebody on live chat has something Moshe to say. Moshe wouldn't have been allowed in there either then. He's not a, he's not a son of Aaron. No, he's not. Well, he he didn't. Of the of the but he's he, not a son he, of Aaron. He, he, his father is the the tribe that could do all of this, which was Cahath, the tribe of Cahath. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. You're right. It's just interesting wording. Somebody pointed this out. And Moshe took his tent and pitched it outside the camp. It's not even talking about the tabernacle because we just had Batzal El even start building stuff. Mm -hmm. We haven't had the completion of the tabernacle yet. 
As far as I can discern. So this we, is just Shekinah kind of Glory. Did Moshe's we, personal tent. Pardon? Was that Shekinah kind of Glory you're talking about? It's the presence. It's the, the glory of Yah. It's the presence like of Yah. I want. I want. Mm-hmm. I feel like that. Like, you know, cozy area. I ah, more like, I think it would be more like a, an area that, where you just feel his presence. And, may, and it would definitely make you warm and cozy. Yes, um. Oh, she's just like. Okay. Oh, Beth, baby. Well, now, th- so this is interesting. Doesn't say how old he was. No. You, we can trace back his age because um, later See, on, when he does take over, go ahead. We have him in chapter thirty-five. They take up the. Um, they take up the. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the word. The offering, basically, that everybody gave for the tabernacle to be built, and then the thirty-six is when they start making the tabernacle. You know, of course, they they give all this information, and some of it is so out of line, like setting. I mean, they're, they're setting the the oil in front. He's giving the instructions. It's what it is. It's the instructions for the oil, and it will be set before the witness. But even he he said, put the the tablets in front of the witness. Mm-hmm. Well, I find that that's often here, the yeah. confusing part about, um, especially like Shemot and Numbers, <laughs> is like the discerning between what is being given as instruction to do and what's actually been done. That's right. You know what I mean? That is so true. So, well, so we'll we'll save the Yahushua. Do you have any thoughts, Lala? No, no, I'm listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you're speaking about the witness, you're talking about the technique. Yes. So they were. Yeah, he hadn't gone to Mount Sinai yet. Like well, he, he had, when he received them, uh, Yahweh said, place them in front of the witness, which the witness is the Ark of the Covenant. Hadn't been built yet. Oh, so the actual Ark, the actual it's, box. Where that's that right. So, and that's what Charles is saying. It kind of gets confusing as to... Yeah, because we're getting 35 is when they start taking yeah. up all the, um, the materials. That's they right. say when he says, you know, hey, the give as your heart, occasion. you know, calls you to give. And they start giving all the material, and then he's assigned Betzalel and it, uh, a, that's a hard one, a Holiab, <laughs> to uh, to kind of lead the crew yeah. building the uh, the the tabernacle and all its uh, set apart instruments. Yes. And then they start building in thirty six. So theoretically, I guess my best guess would be that this is his personal tent in chapter thirty three. Okay. That, makes, that's why that totally makes sense. That makes more sense because so, so, Moshe and, and Joshua are not descendants of Aaron himself. No, they're not. But, but it sounds almost like Yahushua has been adopted by Moshe. <laughs> I mean, well, he's, he's living as, in his tent. He's, 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 his, he's his heir, basically, is his apprentice. For his job, he's his apprentice. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like when we he, see he is following him the, wholeheartedly. The other prophets like in the Tanakh, when they take they take apprentices, apprentices too. We see mm-hmm. like, yeah. you know, they, they, like, they like, also, you know, yeah. So you, see, you see that spark of divine inspiration. Yes, and, and you see that same eagerness uh, in Yahushua, like Caleb. I mean, they're both very eager to please Yah. Okay, well. That, those are things that I, I want to get into later, like when after the ark is built. I want to see. Trails. Yeah, we do have rap, we have lots of rabbi trails, don't we? <laughs> okay, who was reading? You I know, think I was. Yeah. Where was I at though? Okay. I'm gonna stop you right in the middle. Something tent. important. Uh, what was this right you're you're at, yeah. you're at twelve. Twelve. Okay, that's not right. Um, and Moshe, yeah. Okay, Moshe said to Yahweh, "See, you are saying to me, bring up this people, but you have not made known to me whom you would send with me." Though you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my eyes. And now, please, if I have found favor in your eyes, please show me your way mm. and let me know you so that I find favor in your eyes. Guys, that, that is such, wow, that verse. And now, please, if I have found favor in your eyes, please show me your way. That's something that sounds like it would even come from David. Mm-hmm. Show yeah, me yeah, yeah. your way and let me know if, you. If I have earned any kind of favor. Yes, any favor at all. Yeah. Show me your way and let me know you. It's. Do we know him? I mean, are, are we striving to know him? We we are. 
We should. We should be. And you out there, all you live streamers, you should be as well striving to know who Yahweh is. So let me know you that I find favor in your eyes. So favor from Yah comes from knowing him and doing what he wants you to do. I mean, this verse is so much deeper than it looks. I'm sorry. It's important. Oh, yeah. And okay. people don't see that. It's like, they just want to, you know, be easy. Be, take the easy way out, you know, not have to be responsible or obedient or anything. Which, I mean, it's why society's collapsing as it is, because nobody wants to be obedient to their parents. Nobody wants to be obedient to the community. You're right. You know? we're, we're back in the camp, mm -hmm. waiting for Moshe to come down, waiting for Yahushua to come down. We're mm -hmm. back in that camp, and we're doing what? Ever we want to do what makes you happy what makes me happy we don't care what y'all want it's because we're not even reading <laughs> well it's a natural fresh fleshly inclination to want things to be easy yes it's when you're walking in the spirit that you can do that whole james thing count it all joy when you fall into various trials yes and that only comes from following his way you, you have a peace about you. Even though the storms are raging, hurricanes are blowing you everything your around. Eyes fixed on a path. That's it. A path of righteousness. Period. Because we know. We know that our Father is in control. Our Daddy has everything here. He's got it all under control. As long as we watch Him, follow Him, keep our face turned to Him, it's when we turn away, what happens? We're like Peter. Yeah, falling in the water. Save me. I'm sinking. <laughs> I can't swim. He, know how to swim. he knows how to swim. He didn't know how to swim. He did know how to swim. He's a fisherman. Yeah, he knew how to swim. But, but we're in the middle of a huge storm. There's a big storm. Waves. And it's big waves. And so you can swim. But when those waves oh, yeah. are 10 foot tall, you might not be able to swim so good. I'm I still sometimes swallow too much water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. True. Rabbit trail. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go for and it. And consider this nation is your people. Verse 14. And he said, My presence does go, and I shall give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence is not going, do not lead us up from here. For how then shall it be known that I have found favor in your eyes, I and your people, except you go with us? Then we shall be distinguished, I and your people, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. And Yahweh said to Moshe, even this word you have spoken, I shall do. For you have found favor in my eyes. I know you by name. Then he said, Please show me your esteem. And he said, I shall cause all my goodness to pass before you, and I shall proclaim the name of Yahweh before you. And I shall favor him whom I favor, and shall have compassion on him whom I have compassion. But he said, You are unable to see my face, for no man does see me and live. And Yahweh said, See, there is a place with me, and you shall stand on the rock, and it shall be. While my esteem passes by, that I shall put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I shall take away my hand and, shall, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Can you imagine Moshe saw the back of probably Yahusha? Do you think it was Yahusha or Yahweh? I think it was Yahusha as well. Couldn't even see his face at that point. What did well, you he's in his... He's in his pure form. He is. Um, he is. I did. I did hear an interesting comparison to, to maybe he was taking. Remember when the when Yeshua takes? We used to take Peter and. Yes. And who's the hell does he take Peter and? It's uh, Peter and John. Peter and John up on the hill or whatever, and they and they the the, the trans the Mount of Transfiguration yes. thing. Hey, that's there's an interesting theory that ties this to that. That's what he showed him. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's just an interesting thought. It could be because be Moshe, Moshe was there. Because how did Moshe be there if he's dead? Is he talking to the dead or what's going on there? <laughs> he was glorified. So, you know, when we go to Ezra, the second book of Ezra, it tells us that the dead go to sleep. They're they're at rest until Yahusha's Yehush, return. The dead in Yahusha are asleep. Those who have been righteous and obedient are asleep. Those who have been disobedient, those rebels, they're not asleep, are they? They're having nightmares. <laughs> they're living out. That is hell. 
It is. Oh, they're having nightmares. They're asleep, but they're having nightmares. They're not. I don't know. They could be asleep, and maybe they're being living. Tormented. They're being tormented. That's what, they're doing. Their sleep. That's, what the, <laughs> that's what the second book of Ezra tells us, is that they're tormented um, in that place. What's it, Dom? Show. It's, well, it's in the grave, so it's wherever they are, they are tormented. And they are tormented until Yahushua comes back. And at that point, at the judgment seat, they're just cast into the fire and burned up. Because... And Ezra, it also tells us that after death, you can't change your mind. There is no salvation after death. There's no changing your mind. That second before you die, you can't come out. You could. But you got to do it before you die. <laughs> we have one more chapter, right? We do. Okay, I was just... He just just could have change his heart before he died. Oh, he could have. Well, in Pharaoh, if you read the book of Yasher, and I'm, you know, I can't verify all of Yasher, but it doesn't go against scripture except for a few places but in yasher even pharaoh what what does a king do he stands on the hill and he watches his men go and fight yeah he was up on the hill he watched his men go into the river and oof, they they perish but it said that yahusha yahweh sent messengers and they moved pharaoh to nineveh yeah. Yeah. why do you think nineveh repented so quickly when jonah went he's like I know who Yahweh is. I've dealt with him. He wiped out my whole nation of Egypt. So he, can't be, he became somebody important? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Oh. But I know that Nineveh repeated quite rapidly. And remember Jonah, he's like, ah, yeah, I knew they were going to do that. I told you they were going to do that. Why would you even send me? But, but so Pharaoh actually didn't die. So maybe he did have a huge transformation. Oh. According to the book of Yesher. But yeah, all you, don't hear, you don't hear about him a while after that. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, Pharaoh's he, not mentioned again that I can apply. He is not. He is not mentioned ever again that, that I have seen. So he just disappeared from Tom. All right. So Yah, Yah Husha gets to walk in front of Moshe. Moshe gets to see him. 34. Keep reading? I shall. Yeah, do it. And Yahweh said to Moshe, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I shall write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you wrote. Hold on a second. Yes, ma'am. What were those tablets? Sapphire stone. That's, yes. That's the, the, same, the same as, as Moshe's staff. staff. It was sapphire. Beautiful blue sapphire. And um, so Moshe's got a, he said the same as the other stones. So it's obviously going to be two more sapphire stones, don't you think? Yep. And I did look up the interlinear, and it is plural for, for tablets. So there were two tablets written on both sides. So four sides of writing. So Moshe is going to cut the tablets out of sapphire. Does the Targum say a sapphire stone? Like yes, it's a sapphire stone. Yep. So it mentions it like a point Yes. Yeah. All so those read, stones. Read, read it. No, I love it. I'm kidding. Oh, read it. <laughs> Do it. Oh, it's back, sad. In it's back in the beginning. It's all right. Help me do that. It says uh, in 30, the end of 30, it says, He gave it to Moshe, and he had finished to speak with him on the Mount Sinai, and two tablets of the testimony, tablets of sapphire stone, from the throne of glory, weighing 40 cm, described in the finger of Yahuwah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so do you know something that he just said that I've never heard? I never read it when I read the Targum. Where did it come from? Throne of glory. The throne of glory. So the that's how far stone came from? That's what it says. It, it said it came from the throne of glory. So this... <laughs> That makes it even more special. he read it because, like, I thought he was going to find it in 30. Boy, he went all the way to 30. Yeah, it was back in 30 when they were talking about it. says. But in, in 34, it doesn't speak of that mm -hmm. No, it does not. It says, make some, uh, uh, like the first ones. Cut two tablets of stone mm -hmm. like the first ones. Okay, so could so he theory, have? He could have. It should have been the same. It should have been. Did it, it come from the Thunder of Lord's I don't know how it would come from the distance. If Moshe's cut, then I doubt it. Yeah. So they're going to be like the first ones, but maybe not exactly like the first ones. Maybe, 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 maybe y'all gave him the stone and said, no, cut those tablets. Maybe. Down. 
Maybe. I mean, maybe it's similar to... Boy, did we get <laughs> A lot of assumptions here. Maybe it's similar to how they they asked to stop hearing his voice. That's what Ten I'm... chapters ago, you know, well, 13 you know, chapters ago. You know, like, it's... it's, it's, it's Kind of like the stones, these stones in 34, maybe like a, for lack of a better term, a watered down material. That's so Because sad. the same thing is like them rejecting hearing his voice in Exodus. So they're in the yes. inferior material. Possibly, I don't know. I'm just speculating. This is pure speculation. It, all of this is speculation because we have nothing to go on. And it doesn't say anything. <laughs> Does it say anything about it being sapphire stones? No. So, we know that the original tablets were sapphire, and when he broke them, the words flew up to heaven. Oh, wow, uh, beautiful. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? Because yeah. it was of Yah's fingers. Because most Christians would say, oh, that's why we can't keep the commandments, because Moses broke them. Oh, no, they went back up and come back down. <laughs> now, Moshe broke all ten of them. Right. We're, we're justified. Okay. Where, where are you? Verse 2. Okay. That's as far as we made it. <laughs> <I'm> so sorry. <laughs> and be ready in the morning. Then you shall come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the on the top of the mountain. And let no man come up with you, and let no man be seen in all the mountain. And let not even the flock or the herd feed in front of the mountain. And he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. Then Moshe rose er early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as Yahweh had commanded him. And he took two tablets of stone in his hand. And Yahweh came down in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name Yahweh. And Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed Yahweh, Yahweh, and El compassionate. And Hold on. Well, I, I want to say this before you finish reading. These are the attributes of Yah. Mm -hmm. And Yah is declaring them. So he's telling us his attributes right here. And they're called the 13 attributes. Now, go for it, Charles. I was counting. I know, I tried I counted that. 13. There you go. 13 <laughs> attributes of Yah. And, and Yahweh passed before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh, an El compassionate and showing favor, patient and great in loving commitment and truth, watching over loving commitment for thousands, forgiving crookedness and transgression and sin, but by no means leaving unpunished, visiting the crookedness of the father, fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. In, in that, to me... So amazing that the blessings of the righteous go to thousands of generations. So if if Seth and Charles are living righteously, he's gonna bless thousands of your generations. It would almost be to the end of his when he comes back. But for the crooked, those who are rebellious and not being obedient, it's only down to the third and fourth generation. I guess it depends on how bad you are. Well, I mean, we also see we also see in other verses that those children can make their own choices. That's right. Like in David, they can break that cycle. You were thinking David would live righteously, and all his descendants would be blessed for thousands of years. They were blessed, but they were blessed. They were blessed. I mean, even even Solomon, even he was blessed. He just made poor decisions and had his reign taken from him. Well, and if you think about it, maybe he was trying to consummate covenant with all these nations by marrying the firstborn daughter. I don't know. I mean, trying to justify that. In all fairness, trauma. even even David's generations are still blessed because you get all the way down to Messiah being of his lineage, to the point of you know, the eternal King is of his lineage. You know what I mean? Mm. So yeah, I mean, we still get the. There's all it's it's. But, punish but, for your own choices. But look at his mercy and his grace. I, I, I know that's a oh, race is a touchy word, but this, you know, they say there was no grace in the Old Testament, in the Tanakh. Here it is. Here is his grace and his mercy. He is only going to punish those down to the third or fourth generations, and not even those if they repent and break the cycle. They grace can do that. Grace has been around since Adam and Eve. Yeah, yes, grace and favor as well. Abs absolutely. It was his grace and favor to escort them out of the garden instead of just <laughs> smash them. Look, look what he did with Hasatan. And I'm sure this is why Hasatan is so angry. He turned him into a dark spirit, and he will forever roam the earth and then be cast into the lake of fire. Okay? Not so with Adam and Hua. <coughs> they had a chance for repenting. I mean, they got to, we 
our, our forefathers, we got to repent. We still get to repent. We have that choice. Not so with Hasatan. Oh, I hear a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. Oh, I thought you were talking about my baby or something. Listen. Okay. Uh, Seth wants to share something on the topic. Wait, he just read in the third and fourth generation. It says, You are merciful and gracious, long suffering, nine mercies, abounding to exercise compassion and truth, keeping mercy and bounty for thousands of generations, absolving and remitting guilt, passing by rebellions and covering sins, pardoning them who convert unto mm. the law, but, uh, but holding not guiltless in the great day of judgment of those who will not convert, visiting the sins of the fathers upon rebellious children upon the third and fourth generation. Oh, now, there you go. It's upon the rebellious children. Why did Yahushua have to come? It's for our rebellious sin, it isn't yeah. it? But he did come. For example, for us to wash it, walk it up. Why did he say he came? Yeah. He came but for the lost sheep of the house of Yeshua. To reunite the two sticks. To That's destroy it. the enmity between the two Yes, houses. to make one new man. And that one new man will have what? He'll have the, the laws of Moshe and the, the testimony, testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. He'll have, that's the one new man. That Which is, is why Yehuda never had a scepter to part from their hand or, and always had a scholar between their feet. That's right. To hold on to the Torah through the thousands of years. Wow. And, and guys, listen, that is amazing. That, first of all, that Yeshua is still a nation today and that they are, they have held on to the Torah. Of course, Shame, shame, shame on them. They were supposed to teach it to us. They didn't. They hid it. They built a uh, shelter around it and hid it from us. Orthodox Jews don't even teach it to the girls and, and their women. You know, they teach it only to men. I know. What are we, second class citizens? No, I'm kidding. Guys, I feel very blessed to have all, all you men jumping in and teaching today. And that's what it's supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be up here teaching. It's supposed to be a man. And the men are starting to step up, and they're start, starting to take these positions, and this is what it's supposed to be. I should be sitting up there with the women. We should be teaching our own classes. And, and, and I see a lot of talk on, on in the Torah observant communities about women teachers. Listen, if there's not a man around, and Yah has called you, you better be obedient to what he's called. So we do what he tells us to do when he tells us to do it, but when the men step up, we women can start fading out, and that's what it should be. Huh. I kind of like these open circle discussions better than being in separate groups and stuff like that, you know? I do. I, I like it when we can all talk and discuss, because this is the way we grow and we learn. I love it. Mm -hmm. We feel like family. We feel more like family in a setting like this than, you know, by in a setting where it's all formal, people are divided, and yep. children have to go somewhere else, you know? Like they do with churches. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to tell you something. These these two kids are amazing in their growth. So I don't know if you know it, but Bethany and Seth are now homeschooling. So the kids have left public school and they're homeschooling now. Awesome. And what they, that, they went with me to feed cattle yesterday. My, my two little hands. My sister was telling us that homeschooling, you know, like you, all you have to do is like four hours a day and you have the rest of the day free. Well, because they're not having to deal with all the horrible behavior of the bad kids. Yep. Okay? So, what is your favorite class? Bible history. Bible history? Bible history. Okay, so Grant says Bible history, maybe lunch. One of those two. Bible history or good And And Bailey's is Bible history or good citizenship. So, they both have favorite classes, and they've only been doing this for two weeks. Y'all prefer homeschool? Uh, homeschool. Well, it is better for us. Homeschool it, adjusting. It takes adjustment because these two like are very, very active. It's like our walk. Mm -hmm. When we separate ourselves from the world, it can be lonely, can it, Grant? And it's tough. It's a tough adjustment. We know that in the end, we are going to grow, yeah. and we're going to draw ever so near to y'all, and that's that's what we're after, is to get closer to him. When I used to go to school, what was going on? You okay? You want to talk? Not yet. Okay. 
remember as, as a kid going to school, I had it on. The only time I like going is when I got new shoes or something like that. You know, it's like show off my friends. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> I got to go show my shoes and look at my new shirt. <laughs> Other than that, no, I don't want to go. Guys, let's, let's stop and pray right now. Okay, let's pray for our sister. Father, y'all, uh, Father, we just come to you, Abba, first of all, seeking your favor and, and seeking your favor through us being obedient to you, Father. And I know that this sister of ours sitting here, she has been pursuing you hard and fast. And Father, um, she's got something going on in her heart right now, maybe with a close friend um, who just left. And Father, we just pray that you will bring comfort to her heart, ease her mind, Father, bring her peace on this Shabbat. That's what your Sabbath is for, is for family to come together. And that says, Jerome said it, we are family. And Valerie would be the one that would break out and start singing that. And she's the one that's hurting right now. So Father, we're just asking that you will ease her heart, bring her peace and love and joy this day. Father, fill her up with so much joy and so much peace that um, her heart can't hurt at this point, Father. We love you so much. Anybody else want to pray for her? Oh, y'all yeah, watch over Valerie and uh, her friend that was just here, Father. Let her be a walking testimony to her friend that just left. And she is. Father, father just uh, keep, keep us uh, mindful of what you want for us, Father. Your will, your glory, and uh, your ways, Father. Mm -hmm. We love you and we thank you and we bless your holy set apart name and you wish how much you have to pray this. Father, I want to thank you for Valerie's heart, for her stand that she has taken for you, yes. Father. To stand, no matter who turns their back on her, yeah. Abba. Uh, I have seen this for quite some time now. Father, we just praise you, and we thank you for this sister who is, she's a role model for all of us. Uh, and Father, thank you for giving her that strength and that favor and that love that you have so filled her with. And we just say these things in the precious name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's Love just you. hard when you realize you're that, you're that different now. That you don't, you don't fit in where you used to fit in. And that is all oh, praises to the most high that I don't fit in in that last That's anymore. right. But it's heartbreaking when it's somebody that you love, like a sister so much. So you have been, can I share this? Sure. So Valerie has been friends with this young lady for 26 years. Mm -hmm. 26 years, best friends, and grew up together, played together, got in trouble together. Yes. <laughs> and Valerie chose years ago, what, five years ago, mm -hmm. to walk a different path. And it's a lonely path, guys. Listen, it is... We're, we're all here because we probably don't have family to sit and, and converse with over Torah. But it, it can be lonely. But y'all didn't promise this. It's going to be a rose garden, did he? But I'm also so grateful that I have all these people in this room Absolutely. to call and talk to that are my friends and my brothers I work with. And I'm very grateful to, to be surrounded by all of y'all to have people walking the same walk that I am. And we can just share all this stuff daily, or we can wait till the seventh day, which is today. That's right. And we can lay everything out. And that's it. All, that's what it's all about. And we're blessed in the, that we work together. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we work in the mm -hmm. same business, and mm -hmm. they <laughs> are right down the road from me, and I can yell at Charles, yeah, Charles, <laughs> and you go on. So, so we are a very close-knit group, and y'all have blessed us. With that, because this is family. These are the ones that, that we can turn to. Closing books to other chapters and other Well, it's just like Ruth. Yes. She looked towards yes. that direction and said, Those are my people. These are my own. Cool, so. That was not. <laughs> I thought it was cool. And I'm not Maybe. saying that something probably didn't touch her because it did on the way over there. She was telling me, I have some things I need to, I need to look at. Here. That's good. And I trust, I trust his seeds. Always. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you never so, know when they sprout. Yeah. But you just say goodbye, and you don't. You're not 100 percent sure she's coming back. But we're going to pray that y'all changes her heart. That everything that that she heard, everything that she saw from you, that it will it will change her walk. 
Yeah. And that's what we'll do. We'll just I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. No, I mean, you were so interrupting. Oh, my goodness. Can't even get through a class. I knew I was in a boom. I tried to stay downstairs and eat something, but I wasn't really hungry. Y'all know it's bad when I'm Wait, food? What? Food? No, not <laughs> now. She ate it all. So Matthew was like, are y'all about to eat? I was like, oh, then I put on the, I pulled up the live stream. I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> we actually are pretty close. But are we? We're getting there. Yeah. Where are we? Where was we? I don't know, Charles. Oh, wait, I got uh, We were at the end of the third and fourth generation. Yeah. Eight. Verse eight. You want me to continue? <laughs> <Shocking>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. And Moshe heard and bowed himself toward the earth and did obeisance. And said, If now I have found favor in your eyes, O Yahweh, I pray. Let Yahweh go in our midst, even though we are stiff necked people, and forgive our crookedness and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. And he said, See, I am making a covenant. For all your people, I am going to do wonders, such as such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among whom you are, you are shall see the work of Yahweh, for what I am doing with you is awesome. Guard what I command you today. See, I am driving out from before you the Amorite, and the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Yebusite. Guard yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. But break down their slaughter places, and smash their pillars, and cut down their asherim. For you do not bow yourself to another mighty one. For Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous hell. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like zealous, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. zealous. The Hebrew, well, I forget the Hebrew word. I just, I literally just don't know what it is. Are you pulling it up? Right. In the it says, in the, it says mm -hmm. in the Targum, zealous in the avenger. Yeah, that's it. That's that's more. He's he's zealous wow. to avenge his name. Yes. Whereas, like, wow. if you. So if you if you mess up and you break covenant, he's not going to let his name, his reputation be tarnished by your bad behavior. Yes. You will reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. All right. And he says that throughout scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In different ways. That was for my, for my reputation. Mm -hmm. Yes, for my name. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they whore after their mighty ones, and slaughter their mighty ones. And one of them invites you, and you eat of his slaughterings. And you take of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters whore after their mighty ones, and make your sons whore after their mighty ones. That's Solomon. Wow, okay, so guys, listen, they did this. Everything that he's telling them, don't do, they did. Right. Look, guard yourself lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants. They did it. And then he says, break down their slaughter places and smash their Asherah poles. They didn't. They tried, but did they? Did, did Yahushua finish his work? He didn't. He did not finish the work, and the people made covenant with the inhabitants of the land. What, what did that lead to? Everything wrong. <laughs> Everything not of y'all, right? Okay, I'm sorry. You're fine. Go and for it. Been like that for, you know, in a cycle, since, you know, keep going. That's what I'm trying to say. Because, like, yes. we, we were staying by Christmas being outlawed in the band for, you know, for a few years back in when it's Christmas. In the 1800s, yeah. Yeah, it was really, you know, was put back. Then it came. So, so have you ever noticed that when something's outlawed, been, people are like, no, we can't do that. That is against our moral code. It stops for just a brief little time, and then when it comes back, Hasatan has already gathered. He's, he's jumped into the fire. He's created that golden calf. He has danced and brought pride to all the people. And when it comes back, look at what's happened in the, the alphabet group. Look at what's going on there. Okay? They're coming out with a vengeance now. They're pushing the P word with children. Little, I mean, what I'm saying is everything has become accepted and how horrible that it has. Pronouns. Is that the word? What? Uh, most of the words. <laughs> Pronouns, no. Okay, I couldn't figure it out. I was thinking about I something. I get why you weren't trying to say it. But. Head. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Celia. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about something else. <laughs> yeah, like like me, men too. turning into women, men, women turning into that, men. That is happening as well. So did you know that they're now pushing for a law that you can't not hire somebody because they come in, you know it's a man, he's got a huge Adam, Adam's apple and he comes in with lipstick and rouge on, with his hair done up in a pretty deal. You can't not hire him on that grounds. You have to hire him. 
This, these are the new set of rules. Uh, they're going to get some pretty good jobs. Hoy. <laughs> it's weird because I was um, I was watching lady. some stuff about <laughs> Egypt last night. Like this is nothing new. No, the things, and actually we yeah. haven't seen anything yet. You, there was pornography even then. They were yes. rolling out these scrolls and things that I was baffled. That, no wonder that's what the children of it, or the people at whenever he was up on the mount turned straight to what they'd always known. What that's they'd right. Done. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Just the easy way. Well, let's just go back to what we know, what feels good, what happens now, instant gratification. That's right. I mean, it's just the things that they, they brought with them. You're right. Okay. We're turning it back over to you. I'll continue reading. <laughs> I would like. We would. Uh, 17. Do not make the molded <laughs> mighty one for yourselves. Which they had just done. Guard the festival of Matzo for seven days. You would, hey, we're getting close. For seven days you eat unleavened bread as I commanded you, in the appointed time of the new mean mo, new mean new moon of Aviv, because of the new moon of Aviv you came out uh, from Mitzrayim. Everyone opening the womb is mine, and every male firstborn among your livestock, whether bull or sheep. But the firstborn of a donkey you ransom with a lamb, and if you do not ransom, then you shall break his neck. Every firstborn of your sons you shall ransom, and they shall appear before me empty handed. Six days you work, but on the seventh day you rest. In plowing time and in harvest, you rest. There's no excuses, unless it's a life or death matter, as we see with the ox and the ditch. Uh, which one is that called? There's a there's a term for that. The oh, there is a term for it. Uses. It's a, it's if it's a matter of saving a life. We we use the ox and the ditch. Yeah, we say ox and but, the ditch. But it, there's, that's a, there's, a, there's a Hebrew term. Does anybody know it? I can't, I can't do it. Well, I did around my truck. Okay. But that's that's one of the weirdest commandments though. When you have a donkey born, you have to ransom him with a lamb. He didn't want a donkey. They're not. <laughs> they're good work animals. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. A, I'm not an agricultural guy. Like you're good you know, at protecting your. Animals. That's true too. They are. They are protecting your herd. They, they are that. not. I had no, they're not. No, I had a donkey to protect my sheep. He killed my baby. <laughs> she, she killed my baby. So you had a defective donkey. <laughs> I still go down to see my cattle and my donkey there, and she wouldn't even talk to me because she's mad because she can't be with her sheep friends. You so had a defective donkey. I heard stories, beautiful stories of really protective and like donkeys that did their job. Right? Yeah, I mean, she that's what I've always heard they're for, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a somebody that's a donkey. Oh, his name. <laughs> Should have broke her neck. <laughs> she came without a tail. Sounds like somebody tried it on the wrong end. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, and perform the festival of Shavuot for yourself of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the festival of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times in the year, all your men are to appear before the Master Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. For I dispossess the nations before you, and shall enlarge your borders, and let no one covet your land when you go up before Yahweh, your Elohim, three times in the year. Isn't that cool? So yes. listen, he commands us three times a year to to honor these festivals, three three of them a year. And while the men are gone, and it's the men that are commanded to go, while the men are gone, guess what? He is protecting. He has got your, your land is covered and protected. Nobody's going to come in and take it away from you. The men are gone. The protection's gone. The house's protection's gone. He's like, don't worry. Nobody's going to bother your land while you're up here. And he didn't. He blessed them. And that's going to be coming about, too, even in millennial, guys. Yeah. If you don't honor the, you know, the festivals. Cool. If the nations that go up for Sukkot, they won't get rain. They will not get rain. They won't get any rain there. In fact, their skies will turn into bronze. I no rain. Just iron, like an iron sky. Sounds pretty dry. That is very sad. <laughs> uh, do not slay the blood of my slaughterings with leaven. Do not let the slaughtering of the festival of Pesach remain until morning. Bring the first fruits, bring the first of the first fruits of your land to the house of Yahweh, your own hand. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. I saw an interesting thing about that. Good. Well, you know how it always says, uh, it talks about chewing the cud, and that's, we know that that is an uh, idiom for animals that have two stomachs uh -huh. to digest the, the grass and stuff. This is apparently from uh, uh, an interesting thing I heard, an idiom for not taking uh, a goat that's still weaning, that's still nursing, and using it 
as a sacrifice. Because all this is about sacrifice right here. Like these are about talking about offerings and stuff. And so it's kind of weird that that's thrown in. Yeah. But from that sense, it makes sense. It's like, oh, if it's still weaning on its mother's milk, you know, don't take it from there. Well, but, then, but you have to remember the pagan practice back then was to take a baby and cook it in its mother's milk. Yeah. So he's trying to, to separate, set us apart from the profane, but that is a, that is a good point, too. It could be that, but <clears throat> you're not going to want to cook a baby in what nourished it and brought it life. Right? No. What sustained it? You wouldn't cook the baby in it. But in uh, Genesis eighteen eight, we see in this completely does away with this myth that you can't have meat and milk. Though it's probably if you're gluten intolerant, it's probably not good for you. Uh, Mo, uh, Abraham ran. I mean, eighteen verse seven. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hurried to prepare it. He's like rushing about here. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They ate milk and meat, period. And most the, Orthodox Jews didn't mix that at all. Oh, no. If you go to Israel, mm -hmm. you you can go to McDonald's, and you can't get a cheeseburger, can you, can you Lala? No cheeseburgers in Israel. So. And this is probably with my son uh, last night. It's in right now. Oh, and jealous. And I asked him, so how do you do it? Hamburgers. He said, there's no hamburgers that. This is merely how they What about the pizza? Well, you know, it's, it's not what you have back in the U.S. It's no. Yeah. They do have McDonald's. Yeah. No, but, but And there's you can no, get a hamburger, but not no, a cheeseburger. No, no, no mixing. No mixing. So it's, it's really fascinating. Have you been to Israel? <coughs> I, I was telling Valerie the other day, they've opened it back up and you can go now without a vaccine. Oh, nice. So, mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh, I my God. I've got to get my passport renewed because I let it. Uh, I need to use it before it expires. Hmm? I need to use mine before it expires. I've got to get mine renewed. Aren't they 10 years? Yeah. Yes. I got mine in 2016. Yeah. Uh, you're getting there, then you got four, what, then you got four more years. I've renewed <coughs> mine twice. <laughs> yeah, I just tell my age. <laughs> Shut yeah. up, Vicky. Okay, keep going. Uh, verse 27. <laughs> and Yahweh said to Moshe, write these words, for according to the mouth of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. And he was there uh, with Yahweh 40 days and 40 nights. He did not eat bread and he did not drink water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. And it came to be when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai, and while the two tablets of the witness were in Moshe's hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moshe did not know that the skin of his face shone since he had spoken with him. And Aharon and all the children of Israel looked at Moshe and saw the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moshe called out to them, and Aharon and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moshe spoke to them. And afterward all the children of Israel came near, and he commanded them that all that Yahweh had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moshe ended speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Mm -hmm. But whenever Moshe went in before Yahweh to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out, he spoke to the children of Israel what he had been commanded. And the children of Israel would see the face of Moshe, but the skin of Moshe's face shone. And Moshe would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Isn't it beautiful? It's to be that close to Yah that we have a glow. You, you're glowing. Wow, one day. One day that'll be us. Okay, in the, the half tour is First Kings 18, 1 through 39. It's a good story. And it is a good story. And Ahab always makes me laugh. He is just so funny. He's a bad man, but he's also very funny. But I want to read uh, from uh, First Kings 17, 1 really quick before we go into 18. It says, And Eliyahu, which is Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as Yahweh Elohim of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no dew, there shall be no rain these years except at my word. And so when you go over to chapter 18, we see there has been no rain. Mm -hmm. And Ahab has been searching for Elijah. And he would get really angry because he couldn't find him. Um, and I'm, I'm, we're not going to read this whole thing, but Elijah, Eliyahu, finds Obadiah, and he tells him, go tell Ahab, I'm here. And Obadiah's like, 
Are you trying to get me killed? He's been looking for you, and every time he shows up and you're not there, someone dies. Are you trying to get me killed? He, he's like, don't you remember? I saved all these prophets. Okay, so we're going to skip over to verse 16. And Obadiah then went to, to meet Ahab and informed him, and Ahab went to meet Eliyahu. And it came to be when Ahab saw Eliyahu that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O disturber of Israel? He... He is, uh, Ahab is one who, he says what he thinks, doesn't he? He doesn't have a filter. He doesn't have a filter. And he answered, I have not disturbed Israel, but you and your father's house, in that you have forsaken the commands of Yahweh, and you have followed the Baals. And now send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal, and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at, at Jezebel's Yez, table. So he's calling 850 prophets. Almost half of them are of Baal, and the other half are, are, are of the Ashtaroth. Ahab then sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets on Mount Carmel. And Eliyahu came to all the people and said, How long would you keep hoping between two opinions? Hopping, excuse me. Hopping between two opinions. If Yahweh is Elohim, follow him. If Baal... Follow him. But the people answered him not. They aren't making the decision. They're double-minded, aren't they? They want to do some things Yah's way and the other things the way of the traditions of man. Where are we today? We're there, the same place, except they're not doing very much Yah's way. No, they're doing more traditions. They're, do, they're more into the tra traditions of man than Yah's way. No, they may not tell a lie. They may not steal. Mm -hmm. They may help out the community. They may help out in the community. A lot, and I'm going to tell you something, a lot of them have really, really good hearts. But if you're not following Yah, then you are what? Of the world. You're of the world, but you're also evil. Yep. If you're doing things that are not Yah's way, it's called evil. Okay? Yep. In 22, and Eliyahu said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of Yahweh, but the prophets of Baal are 450 men. So he is fixing to to battle with the prophets of Baal, okay? Now let them give us two bulls and let them choose one for themselves and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood, but set no fire. And I, I prepared the other bull and lay it on the wood, but set no fire. And you shall call on the name of your mighty one, and I, I shall call on the name of Yahweh. And the Elohim who answers by fire, he is Elohim. So he just taught them, y'all need to choose. Choose be between Baal, or Yahweh. If Baal's the Elohim, follow him. If Yahweh is Elohim, follow him. But stop following both. Stop mixing the profane with the holy. That's what they've been doing. And so he said, whoever's fire gets lit, that's going to be the Yah. And the word is good. And Eliyahu has said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many. And call on the name of your mighty one, but set no fire. And they took the bull which was given them and prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning until evening. That's a long time, isn't it? Saying, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they leaped about the slaughter place which they had made. And it came to be at noon that Eliyahu taunted them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a mighty one. Be louder. You're not being loud enough. Scream for Baal to come. He must be meditating. Or is he busy? Or is he on a journey? Or it could be that he's asleep and had to be awakened. So he is really making fun of them. And they cried aloud and they cut themselves. And that was pagan to cut yourself and bleed. They cried aloud, they kept themselves according to their ruling with knives and spears until the blood gushed out of them. It was a bloody mess, and still did they have fire? No, but they did have Eliyahu making fun of them, right? And it came to be when midday was past that they prophesied until the time of bringing the evening offering. But there was no voice, and no one answered, and no one paying attention. So by this time, even the crowd's like, oh, is that what you've been doing? Huh? Where, where have you been? Bethany, what's going on? I mean, they're not even watching these prophets. They're bloody and jumping about, and they're not even being watched. Then Eliyahu has said to all the people, come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him, and he repaired the slaughter place of Yahweh that was broken down. So even the altar, the slaughter place, 
it had not been fixed. It hadn't even been used. He had to repair it. And Eliyahu took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of, of the sons of Yaakov, to whom the world of Yahweh had come, saying, Yisrael is your name. And with the stones, he built a slaughter place in the name of Yahweh. And he made a trench around the slaughter place large enough to hold two says of seed. And a say is about, what, three gallons? Isn't it about three and a half gallons, somewhere around there? Um, 3.2, 3.2 gallons. Um, and he arranged the wood, cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood and said, fill four jars with water and, and pour it on the ascending offering and on the wood. So he has soaking and saturating the bull, the wood, everything that is needing to burn. It is being soaked. And then he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So 12 jars of water, one jar for each uh, tribe of Israel, right? And the water flowed around the slaughter place, and he filled the trench with water too. And it came to be at the time of, of being the evening offering that Eliyahu, the prophet, came near and said, I mean, he's not jumping about, he's not yelling. He came near the altar and he said, just spoke it, Yahweh Elohim of Abraham, Yishak and Yaakov, let it be known today, you are Elohim in Israel, and I, your servant, have done all these matters by your word. Answer me, O Yahweh, answer me, and let this people know that you are Yahweh, Elohim, and you shall turn their hearts back to you again. And then fire of Yahweh fell and consumed the ascending offering and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. And all the people saw, they fell on their faces, and they said, Yahweh, he is the Elohim. <coughs> Yahweh, he is the Elohim. And Eliyahu said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. 450 of them, guys. 450. So they seized him, and Eliyahu brought them down to the wadi, Kishon, and slew them there. And guys, it looks like, it looks like Eliyahu is the one who slew them. 450. He slew them there in the, in the Kishon Valley. And Eliyahu said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, because of the sound of the noise of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Eliyahu went up to the top of Carmel. He bowed down to the ground, and he put his face between his knees. And guys, it doesn't say it yet, but he's going to send his, his servant to check on those rain clouds. Is there anything coming? Oh, there's just a little bitty cloud, right? And then it grew, and rains came. So the rain did come at his word, as Yah had told him. And so... Following false prophets, what happens? They all, they get killed. What happened to the, the prophets of Ashtoreth? What do you think they did? I would quit my job <laughs> if I just saw all the prophets of Baal get slaughtered. I would, I'd be like, yeah, almost, I'm going to work for the other guy. It almost sounds like they died willingly too. Like, yeah, I'm ready to be killed. <laughs> yeah. Well, he said, you go, go grab them and don't let even one of them escape. So they were like, Ah, uh, they don't have the peace. Listen, we would be willing, I pray that we would be willing to go uh, to the the death for y'all. I pray that. I pray that we've got the, to martyr them, that I pray that we've got the, the courage and the strength, because I'm going to tell you something. When faced with that, it would be totally different. If you're meeting death in the face, it would be different, and it would be awful. And we've, we've seen brothers and sisters overseas who have, stood their ground and praised Yah, even as they were being beheaded uh, by the enemy. And that's in recent years. We've seen that. I pray that I have that strength. I pray that all of us would have that strength if we're called for such a time as that. And now we are in Mark 9, 1 through 10. Can read, you read it? Sure. And I had a verse for Valerie, but she disappeared. <laughs> She's trying to feed my kids. Oh, she's doing a good thing. <laughs> and he said to them, Truly I say to you, that there are some standing here who shall not taste of death at, at all until they see the reign of Elohim have come in power. And after six days, Yahushua took Kepha and Yaakov and Yohanan and led them up 
up on a high mountain alone by themselves, and he was transformed back there. Excuse me, he was transformed before them. Okay, now this is really cool. He took Kepha, who he said is a monk, that this faith is going to be built on. He took Yaakov, who ended up being the head of this movement, of the way of truth, the way of the Nazarene, and he took Yochanan, his best friend, who he trusted and entrusted his mom to. So he took his very closest ones. And Yaakov was who? His brother. His brother. So his he brother. took his brother with him. So he, they're going up to the Mount of uh, Transformation. And listen, if you go back, he says, and this is what Charles was saying. He said, um, those of you here standing here will not taste death until they see the reign of Elohim having come in power. People today think that means the coming, that these guys did not. It was the coming of the Messiah. That's not what it was. They're going to see the transformation of Moshe and Eliyahu. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, keep going. I'm and sorry. his garments became glittering, exceedingly white, like snow, such as no longer on earth is able to whiten. And there appeared to them Eliyahu with Moshe, and they were talking with Yahushua. And Kepha responding, said to Yahushua, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? And let us make three booths, one for you, and one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu. A booth, a sukkah. Mm -hmm. when, when is this? Sukkah. <laughs> I'm just like, I feel like I'm camping now. Do you hear frogs? <laughs> <laughs> I thought the plague of Egypt had to go. Oh no, it's the plague. <laughs> Lala, that went funny. <laughs> that was cool. We're, we're picking. We are in Egypt. <laughs> That's right. Because he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And there came a cloud overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, beloved, hear him. Wow. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but only Yahushua. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them not to relate to anyone what they had saw till Son of Man, excuse me, till the Son of Adam had risen from the dead. Wow. And keep going. And <laughs> they kept this matter, they kept this matter to themselves, debating what the rising from the dead meant. Oh, and that isn't that such human nature? Mm -hmm. They didn't they did exactly as Yahushua said, they didn't mention it, but they're like so, what do you think? It's rising from the dead. Like we're doing here. They're oh, with man. their teacher, and instead of going to ask their teacher, they speculate among themselves. That's right. Isn't it not funny? <coughs> it sounds otherworldly, like, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> it does, Daddy. Do you believe this? Do you think this is credible? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think he was right? Well, they didn't go to him because he's the one that told them until the son of Adam arises. So, guys, this, is this your favorite tour portion now? Yeah. It's mine. I, I mean, I just love this because uh, it just brings into light how, you know, I always wondered when I was reading this, how did the Levites know who to kill? Did they just run through and randomly slay people? No. There was a, there was a method to that. They were bought up and hurt. Hmm? They were bought up and hurt. Yeah. They were either on the ground or they were standing there with their swollen bellies. <laughs> it almost sounds like uh, the Grinch. Like they were had this big belly and these little bitty thighs. I don't know. But um, live streamers, it has been our pleasure. Uh, it has really been a pleasure having these two gentlemen up here with me. And all the talk that we had in the room, it's been a very good for me. I've enjoyed it. Both of y'all, my target might, and my little teacher man over here. So, Seth with the beard is throwing me off. I'm not used to it yet. Yeah. I, I like, like it. I like it. I'm not saying it's going to be I like it's yours too. Grow. It's going to grow. I'm used to mine. I don't have one. Stop shaving. <laughs> oh, did you come in to stop shaving? Yes. How'd oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? We're going on. Yeah, yeah, next week I'll come in with a beard bigger than y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be impressed. I'm kidding. <laughs> Guys, listen, we have fun because we're family. We, boy, <laughs> we laugh and we joke with each other because we are family. But we come together to study the Word because it is our, it is what fills our heart with joy, is to learn more of who our Abba is, who Father Yah is, because in studying, we also learn who we're supposed to be in Him. It's our duty to do it. It is our duty. It's what um, Shaul told Timothy. 
Steady to show yourselves? Approved. Approved. And he wasn't talking about the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. He was talking about the whole Tanakh. The Brit Hadashah didn't come for another 150 years. So there's no way he was telling him, go study Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and look, while you're, <laughs> while, <laughs> and look yeah, while you're at it, go ahead and read all my letters that I wrote to Romans, to the Galatians, to the Colossians, to the Philippians. And then if you want to, you can turn them and twist go ahead them. and make doctrine of them. Okay? Galatians 3.10, it says that you're cursed if you don't follow the Pope. Galatians 3.10. My little homeschooled tour observant 16 year old, 15, 14, 14 year old. He seems more mature. Said Galatians 3. <laughs> says what? Come here, come here. I want you to say that out loud. Sit down, Daddy. Sit down, Daddy. Okay. <laughs> Wow. I, I, I can't even get down that low. You too short. Just come have my chair. Come, come here. Come here. Come over here. Sit, sit in Charles said, Come sit in his chair. Why have you put me in this position? I didn't do it. I'm okay. Just, just there. Chair. Boy. This one's more comfortable. Okay. Now, tell tell, tell our live streamers. Uh, Galatians 3.10 says that you're cursed if you don't follow the Torah. So, need, need we say any more for this Torah portion today? You are cursed if you don't follow the Torah portion. And if you want to read about the curses, go to Deuteronomy, because that is where the curses are quite spelled out. And you know, guys, wow, well, you brought that up, okay? I'm going to just carry it one step further. As we are about to close, I want to say that one of the biggest curses that I have seen back here is so <coughs> obvious today that it's not even... It's, it is so obvious that it's scary. In chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, in verse 20, we see this everywhere today. It says, Yahweh sends on you the curse, the confusion, and the rebuke in all that you set your hand to do. Anything that you try to do, you're going to fail. There's going to be a rebuke, a curse, and confusion until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the evil of your doings by which you have forsaken me. The evil of your doings means doing anything that is contrary to Torah, okay? Brings you this curse. So if you're not honoring Shabbat, if you don't have the sign of the Sabbath on you, you're cursed, right? If you're not... <laughs> your mom is over there pointing and laughing at you. That is not right. Mom, you will come up here and sit on the... <laughs> So listen, guys, we're, we're not going to keep you because I know that everyone here is hungry and they're about to see, hear the sign. Yeah. So Shabbat Shalom. 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 Let's say it all. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. And guys, thank you for coming to the Way of Truth through Torah to study with us today. We have fun. We enjoyed you being here. And uh, Charles, thank you for coming up here and joining in with the teaching today. That was lots of fun. And... Um, if you want to see Charles, you can always go to Mahaya and go to the Men's Life House because he teaches there every Shabbat. And um, he grew up here in, in our little place in the beginning and branched out, and he's just grown into a really awesome teacher. So I highly recommend it. So uh, guys, listen, be blessed. And we will be studying Zechariah this evening. Huh? We will be studying Zechariah, just the first chapter this evening, and that depends on what time it is. I don't know how much time I took today. But, um, Grant, would you do me a, the honor of praying this out today? Yes, ma'am. Oh, there you go. I'll be off. Thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to spend the Sabbath with you right now, Father. Thank you for allowing us to do the study and to learn about the golden calf and what happened. Father, uh, thank you for that uh, story in Kings about the fire, because that was Elijah having faith in the fire. Wow. Father, I uh, ask you to just help us food that we're about to eat to nourish our bodies and clean our souls. We love you. Thank you. You should always never pray. Amen. Amen. Can, can I ask you something? Y'all dedicated an hour the other night to prayer.
last night. Last night. How, how did that how did that go? Good, well. Good. Well, really good. So guys, listen. This is a family chasing after y'all. They're chasing after him, pursuing him. And they spent an hour the other night, and here's here's the, the littlest one of them. Come on over here, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bailey. So the guys, coolest one of the group. Yeah, she is the coolest. Okay. She's fine, Charles. She's like, <laughs> she was gonna she was gonna bottle feed one of my babies yesterday and we didn't even get a chance because mom and dad said come home. <laughs> no, we didn't. They said come home. We're gonna Lies. eat without you. <laughs> We were scared. I'm actually scared of their mama, so I carried them home. <laughs> the mama bear, the papa bear, when you don't get them home in time, you get in trouble, eh? Right? No, mama's and papa's just like, extended vacation! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the night. Oh, that's what, they were mad I brought them back. Yeah, that's what it was. I that's what it was. No wonder. No wonder. But guys, listen. They literally spent an hour just talking to y'all and listening for him to talk back. And this is where you grow ever so closer to Yala. It's when you spend time with him. And last night was Shabbat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did y'all have any great revelations? It's your first time. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. speaking to me before that of what to pray about. I don't need to handle them as far as like being a good dad and not just yelling at them. Like beat them more? Yeah. Like, like just whoop them? No, but no, just kidding. like be more loving <laughs> like the father is to us. Wow. And, uh, I saw that yesterday and I prayed about it. It was good. It yeah, was really not good. to mine was like not to grumble against his will. Yes. Wow. No matter what it is. Yep. So, you know, that's a hard thing to do. Everything if you're in Israel, what they know is that everything that happens, good, bad, ugly, you had a flat and you ran out of fuel all at the same time. Yah has purpose behind it. Yes. And we have got to get to the place where we can actually accept that and know that whatever happens in our lives it's Yah's will, and He's going to use it for it to, to accomplish whatever He's wanting to accomplish. It may be that you're going to run into somebody that day. Yep. So, falling into His will and being happy about it, mm -hmm. that brings shalom, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and, but it's the hard part, yeah, and I'm struggling with that too. Okay? It's about being patient. Yes. Wait, because I, I've had, I got it the right oh, yeah. one time. My mom said, hey, you got your cover? Come get it. I got mass. I don't want that cover. I'm leaving. I'm already running late. And <laughs> then I had a wreck. I see on somebody. Oh, wow. Yeah. See? Uh, if I would have went back and got that cover, you'd have more patience. Yeah. You know, and hindsight's always 20-20. <laughs> always. We can look back. I can look back on life and, and at choices I've made and had I chosen y'all's way instead of my way, been patient for his way, it would have things would have changed. It, they would have been working out in a completely different manner. And it would have I would have followed along the path that he had for me. But we choose and he loves us so much he allows us. We, the, the thing is to get to where we're choosing his way. Right? Okay. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, I like that. What is that? Snickety. Snickety. <laughs> I think it's a retail room, pink you. <laughs> okay, guys, we love you. We pray for you. And uh, we hope you have a blessed shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. shalom. Bye. I can't even reach my computer. There.